Discretion is advised. Happy Monday. You are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 129 and we are in patch 7.0.3 Legion. Tonight we are going to be talking about some pretty interesting and exciting news from PTR that does include professions and uh, some interesting reputation changes for alts. Fake sub numbers were reported. Uh, they are not accurate, so we wanted to take the 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 show today to make sure we set the record straight and in case you did not know the north american arena championships took place this weekend and boy was it epic we have that and much much more so make sure you guys stay right here you have crossed into the world of the dead in search of answers amongst the azeroth elite there is a group that defies convention a group that stands in the face of trolls and doesn't flinch. A group that strives on unity, trust, and unwavering resolve. A group that eats tacos. For the players, by the players, we bring you... She can start a revolt with a chaos bolt. Bell, the Pwncast Vanguard. The wolves whose howl can signal death's coming, Lycan. Snap back and get faster for the pet battle grandmaster, Gemma Banks. He's sharp as a dagger with that dapper swagger, secret sauce. We bow to no one. We are Legion. We are Pwncast. Welcome back. I did bring the Writers of Rohan with me, unfortunately. Uh, not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. But uh, I guess I can unmute these guys now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're unmuted. Uh, Lycan's rapping, so there's that. I um it it wasn't I won't say it's it was bars. terrible, but I mean My my classifies terrible. It was it wasn't gym so quality, better? that's for sure. Uh yeah, <laughs> it was wasn't gym bodies. in the Hilton drunk rapping quality. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, I like laying them fat beats down on wax. That they're not fat beats. Uh they're just the wax. Just so we're clear, there's nothing fat <laughs> about your beats. Uh I did bring the Death Knight. Who I perfect. actually had to soul stone uh, this week, Lycan, who missed last week. I did. I did. I was a little under the weather. Uh, I guess I ate too much pie, but, you know. I, we believe that one. We do, in well, fact. Th that's the bad part. Believe that. The, but the bad part was I didn't eat any pie that week before. I just got sick and it just got threw my sugar And, then, and then you ate pie. But when I came home Saturday night, I did make fried ice cream. Of course you did. So that's what you do yeah, when you're why, yeah. When you're sick. That's yeah. what you do when you have diabetes. You're not feeling well. Or livabetes, as we L have called livabetes. Livabetes, yeah. as we've come yeah. to call it. I did also bring uh, the mage who is back to his mythic ways. Hots for shots. I got two of seven mythic this week. Working. Aren't you late got... though? Didn't like? Aren't you like world one hundred and thirtieth now? <laughs> You guys are... Hey, it's better than World 131st. <laughs> are you, what are you, server first, second? Server first, yeah. Server first. Uh, our competition oh. actually just quit today. They will no longer be raiding because two of their people left. So who Was it My Little oh. Ponies? No, oh. it was Fearful Ways. Oh, I don't, yeah. I've never heard of them, so they weren't too important. Neither have I, yeah. I've been They're, on the server for four, they, four years, almost five, and I've never heard of that. They transferred ever. here a few years ago, and then they were doing really well, and then I, I don't know what happened. Clicking. I've, never, clicking. I've never even seen a person in that guild. Apparently it's small. Someone's um, clicking. Yeah. Hello, who's clicking? Because I can hear it. Stop. Thanks. Mm -hmm. the mouse? I, don't th I yeah, think it might not have been my friend. I can hear the clicking of the mouse, so stop. So hot mute. You can just mute Hush, yourself. It's not me. Hush, Somebody did you is get clicking. that achievement? The, no. Because yeah, of course there's no server first, first achievement, okay. achievement Yeah. Yeah, because there's no more achievement, so. <laughs> and what did I say? He When he messages that to us and tells us that he's their server first or whatever, I'm like, oh, but at least you'll know. <laughs> yeah. Take oh, a picture. It's so irritating, but yeah. Well, we it's... forgot to take a picture of the Xavius kill. Yes, we did. Sorry, not everyone was there anyway. So. Not everyone was there, but we did bring the monk who says size doesn't matter, uh, Jimma Banks, even though I have told him that it does matter. It doesn't well, always matter. Motion in the ocean. No, it's not. How you that's, something, that's something people say when they're lying. But it doesn't, you have to know the topic. You can't just say it. What if it's the first time you get a chance to do that world quest and it's called size doesn't matter? 
instantly all the ladies spoke up and they were like, yeah, it does. I was in a, I was in a area with more than one lady and they definitely all spoke up. So it doesn't always matter. And it was fun to do that world quest for the first time. So that's, <laughs> that's the reference. Yeah. I just wanted that's you funny. to be equipped with all the information when going into certain things in your life. I didn't want you to be, you know, uneducated in that regard so that you False have proper, info, yeah. proper expectations are always important yeah, yeah. Uh, in certain life situations. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know now, right? Uh, Man. With Hilton's that, about to happen. Right. With that, I did bring... Ice cream again, or? No, not Sherbert either. I did bring the priest who slept through the guild Xavius kill secret sauce. Yes. yes. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I know it was kind of a big deal, but I just I couldn't do it. Um, we didn't have room for work. you anyway because it was a combined run. But Yeah, so, and that's I'm totally okay with it. Um, I'll get a kill tomorrow, so. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, like, I was just guys, like, good job. I was just thinking about it, and I'm like, the one time the guild performed super well, and you were not there to see it because it we it, they went in and outside of a couple um, a couple issues with the blades, like it was beautiful. Right. Literally, when he got to like 15 percent health, I was like, holy shit, we're really gonna do this right <laughs> now. Do this? This is real. And then when this it got even cool. closer, I'm like, oh, oh, okay, this is. And I had I had prepared for an evening of. Of wipage. Of wipage. And that's mm -hmm. no, yeah. that's not insulting the guild. Did you have just, Charmin? Or did new, you have... I have my lavender, lavender scented right. toilet paper. But, it, and it's not an insult to the guild. It's just, no. Xavius was a struggle, you know, the week prior. But, um, you know, we're, we're not on Haas's level where we're pretend server first because there's no achievement. But, um, no, it was, I had uh, my food they, ready. They did a good job. Yeah. Two bottles I, I, of water. I, like, I was ready to just give it my all. Did you get any smarter? No. Obviously not. It's just but... good for electrolytes. Uh, but yeah, I'm, we're sad you missed water. it, but you really needed sleep. I know you really, really, really... I'm still tired now. Um, yeah. It's fine. Like, I mean, I actually went to bed like at a semi-decent time last night. So... Okay. Okay. <laughs> live a, live a bit, live a bit is... You need to make a tune with that name, too. Live a bit is... it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll we'll make a Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey. I thought it was yeah, Thanksgiving. Your your mic's probably off, by the way. But the whole time I'm talking and I'm muted. I'm just talking away. Just. I was just like, she like lip syncing well, us? Well, Jim like... saved it with a happy Canadian Thanksgiving because he saw very quickly that it was going awry because I muted. I started muting the mic instead of muting two different things. Are we muted? Screen. No. Now? No. no. I don't mute no. you guys randomly. I, although I should. The second you guys start talking shit, funny. I should just mute you. And you guys you really know. wouldn't have a podcast. if No. Well, that's valid because you guys do talk a lot of shit. But yes, it is Thanksgiving. Uh, is it today? Is the Thanksgiving today? Was yeah. it yesterday? <laughs> oh, it, it's okay. It's, yep, turkey. It's, it's, it's valid. My don't friend Strider messaged show. me Happy Thanksgiving and I messaged back an appropriate gif with a face happy palm. monday and she she <laughs> said well monday. we have our thanksgiving before you we're better and i'm like well i mean that's actually yeah. valid she said we copied canada uh we we had had it for us. I i'm gonna fact check that i feel like we might have actually I, there's a lot of copying going around these days and ages if people are copying yeah. other people's stuff that's just a shame but uh there isn't a whole lot of news this week but there is some some good stuff that's come out of the data mining for ptr so uh, just a small reminder, bonus events are back. So make sure that you guys are checking the calendar for those bonus events um, because they are back. And next week is a good one. Well, this, uh, this week, sorry. The one for that's coming Tuesday. For rep. Oh, yeah. yeah, for yeah. Rep. Oh, the World Quest mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it. I just completed yeah. mine. The get 20 World Quests and you also get uh, 5K resources. That was, yeah, I like that one. Yeah. yeah. It's nice if you need to do, like, I've been putting off, I think, the fourth tier of my order hall stuff because I didn't want to give up the 10K resources, so I did I that just today. gave the 15K today for the, Ooh, it the, hurts, the second right? legendary. I don't even have one. So it hurts so whatever. bad when you have to give up so much resource. I just really want to cry. It just hurts me on many levels, but, I mean, what so are you going to do? I'll see, I'll see a legendary in March, so it's fine. If you, Tuesday's time locking dungeons if you like were Aja, you would get a legendary every time you run a mythic dungeon because she's up to she's like five. Twenty two. She's not up to twenty two. She has them all. Which There's is like really triple. funny because after she got her third legendary, they came out with a hot fix that said they were fixing it where people weren't getting multiple legendaries back to Did back they fix like it that. Prior to 
like prior, and then like two days later, she got one. Another one, whatever and then it was, an, and then another one. Literally, I'm just, and she's to the point where she doesn't tell people when she gets them. But those of us that run Mythic Pluses, we know because it tells you. And I'm just like, fuck you. Like I check the guild, like the guild info oh, every day to see who got. So. That's actually pretty smart stalking. Yeah. One I, day I text, I text Soiled, and I'm like, you dick. <laughs> oh, did he get one? Oh, he left yeah. that part out when him and I talked. What a jerk. I told, I told him better up his DPS with that damn legendary. He's I like, I hope so. I can't believe. Right now, I'm I'm better than him, and I'm enjoying that because I'm usually not. So I'm just going to relish that being better than him for just a little while longer. And then I won't be, and it just it is. I finally got to see one drop. So I was actually kind of excited, but... Honestly, I've off. seen the most drop from Mythic Dungeons and World Quest, which are the two things that I do a lot of because oh, yeah. I want to try World to... Quest? Yeah, like from World the cash. Asha like got the... three from the turning in the yeah. emissary quest oh, the emissary and getting it out quest? of the box. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> I thought you were That's saying like... like you could complete a world quest and get but it out of the box. But you can though. You can. Yeah. You can you kill, kill a trash a mob. And yeah, a... and it and yeah. it'll drop. My I that got a legendary ring. A ring. Yeah. I got the ring, the seal of Necrophantasia that gives me like double the empowered rune weapon. Right. And it was uh it was the very first world quest emissary thing that I turned in for High Mountain and I got it. Yeah. So I did so, those yeah, crazy. They're out there. Somebody's getting them. It is. It's not I'm for not, some of us. It's not the fruits of my labor, but with my luck, Jim will probably get it next, and he'll. It be is the, my turn. He'll be the only one. Yeah. He's gonna get it. tomorrow. Watch that. I, <laughs> I would be so mad because he <laughs> would never course? let us live it down ever. Literally, he's, gonna, would... he's gonna kill the world That's boss. That's not and my he's style. Drop the second one. He I've gotten loot off the the last three world boss like each week. I've never used a roll. I just it was like here, have some loot. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not lucky in loot. Honestly, I'm not really lucky. I've never been super lucky. The loot that I've gotten is either from World Quest or running with somebody that was a clothy that gave it to me. But I'm not. I don't. It doesn't really happen. Um, What are you gonna do? Same. Yo, también. Also, uh, there was a a news report that came out this week uh, stating that Tom Chilton had given his sub numbers for World of Warcraft up to ten. That we're at ten million, which obviously is a jump. But that's actually not valid. Uh, Blizzard went on the record and stated that that is completely inaccurate. He did not say that, uh, and that number is wrong. However, it could be right. Maybe he said it off the record, and they they chose to put it in that article. I don't really know. Um, But Blizzard is not backing that information. And until Blizzard backs information, we make sure you know the right information. Um, I know know, it has increased, though. Oh, and they've they've said that they've seen numbers that they have not seen since Cata, which should already tell you if anybody watches the numbers, kind of where we're sitting. Um, And, you know, my husband had made a comment about Overwatch, which everybody that plays Overwatch is going to freak out and comment on the show and be like, fuck you, Belle, and that's fine. But my husband had made a comment about how when he plays Overwatch, it's really difficult for him to try to to queue in. He spends a really long time in queue. Other people have mentioned it um murky had said whenever he goes to look for somebody to play overwatch with they're all in legion and i just wanted to go out on the record and say that i did tell people that this was going to happen happen. you you people had said what did they say that i i laughed at they said that overwatch was going to be a wow killer right that blizzard had developed Mm -hmm. their own wow killer it's just yeah, not for that time. You know? I mean, cool people. So until Legion was launched. People had something to do for a little while while we waited for Legion, but I, I think, I don't think it's possible for Blizzard to develop a game that's going to be a World of Warcraft killer. The ultimately, the World of Warcraft killer would be World of Warcraft itself if they continued in the downward spiral that they started in in right. you know in, in Warlords of Draenor. But so much redemption has happened that even yeah. I was looking at Twitter yesterday and somebody said, um, you know who it was? It was it was. Soda Poppin, who abandoned World of Warcraft, if you guys, I don't wow. know if any of you follow that, but he b- abandoned for console, yeah. and yeah, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't played for a really long time, and he just said, you know, it's a month after, and I still love everything about Legion. I still love it. So, I think, I think that's pretty exciting. I don't know what their, we don't know what their numbers are, but we know that they're well, better than they have been, so. Mm-hmm. And here's my thing on that Chilton comment. I think he said it. I think he was given that information but was told not to say it because right. he has a tendency to leak things that he's not supposed to. Like the whole end boss of Warlords of Drainer was him. And he tends to leak things that didn't, and say things he's not supposed to. But if you look at the numbers from Cataclysm, and they were at 12 million at launch, but only dropped to 9.1 million at the end of Cataclysm. Mm hmm. 
And those numbers in between, they were hovering between 10 and 11 million. So it is a big possibility that it's there, and I would I, I would not be surprised. And I, But I think Blizzard's trying to do some damage control because they don't want to release the numbers anymore. Because when they started right. doing that, that's when people said, oh, well, look, while it's dying. And that's right. and that's that's an education on the part of some of our players too. Maybe the players who are not so much news inclined, maybe they don't they don't follow you know every little step and aspect of news. It, it could be somebody panics them, right? Like, haven't you ever heard of your guildy or somebody you're playing with regurgitate something they heard somebody else say and they make that mm-hmm. fact? It's a it, it's an epidemic that's it's not just for gaming. It's all over the place where people will do that. But right. I think that people will take things, and I, I think Lycan's right they'll take that out of context and they'll say oh well we only have 9.3 million it's down a million we're all gonna die basically mm-hmm, I, right, think it's, yeah. I think it's that slippery slope of poisoning the well kind of um so i think we're in a really good place and i know that our server which is not a large server is at everybody's there i literally can't find right. anything for shit so I know it's way bigger than black yeah. rock like i noticed a huge difference from black rock to argent dawn i don't think i've ever seen argent dawn like this and i've been on argent dawn mm-hmm. almost five years i don't think i've mm-hmm. ever seen argent dawn at this glory i would have to i would like to, i'd be curious to know what the numbers are but i don't think i've ever seen um you know it's an rp server which we don't rp but um the normal people right. kind of took over it's it's mostly raiding and pvp now but um i would be interested to Define see normal well, that's the type of server. Norm- normal, normaler. Like a normal. Yeah. You have normal PvP, PVE. Like it's, it would be considered I'm labeled giving... as normal. Oh, <laughs> it's not normal by any means because you're on the server hot. So, uh, as long as you're Fair. taking up residence here, it's not normal. Just give me a couple of weeks and I'll retrial for midwinter, or but... give it my first trial. <sighs> nice. Somebody... Good luck. But think about this, though. I mean, all right. So even if we go and we're saying since Cataclysm, right? Even if we go the lowest number in Cataclysm, which is 9.1 million, it is a 12-year-old game that is doing 9.1 million subs. It's more than relevant. It is a driving force in the industry still. And and so, yeah, it, the only thing is I honestly see Killing WoW is WoW 2. You know, unless right. they come out with a sequel, it's the only thing it's going to kill. Every big MMO I heard every time, it's going to be the WoW killer. And I same thing. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, give it up. Like, everyone wants to say it in. Bell just mentioned the people that don't pay. T- I don't pay attention to any news in every expansion. I heard, oh my god, the numbers are down. But you still, if I mean, you know, we're playing or I was playing, so I don't, I don't care if there's one less million. Blizzard does because it hurts their pockets. But right. what's a, what's a million people missing to us unless they're key guild members or people we run with? Then it's right. more of a problem. But if I can log in and I can game, I'm. I don't. Then give, you're fair game. I don't give two shits if everybody's playing Call of Duty. Cool, you're awesome. Everybody's playing Overwatch. Cool, you're awesome. Don't care. I'm good. Yeah, I you do not see. say they're awesome. You're you're I filling don't, in different I don't. words. No. Yeah, that's valid. I don't that's even it. think a WoW two would kill WoW. Um, for the, I mean, if you look at, I think it was EverQuest and EverQuest two. Mm-hmm. EverQuest, I think I, I want to say it was one of those, but they came out with EverQuest two, and everyone was like, wait. Can we take these tunes that we've spent ten years developing and bring them over yeah. to EverQuest Two and get something from it? And they're like, no. You I always wondered if over. Blizzard would, and and like, would do that. Nah. <laughs> so they just stuck with EverQuest, and EverQuest was was paid for for two years longer or something like that. Right. Then EverQuest Two. EverQuest went two went free to play because they were hurting that bad for the original. I have a feeling it'll stay that way. Mm-hmm. So, so PTR has brought some data mining from uh, World of Warcraft, which we can't data mine, so we it's not uh-huh. us, it's actually Wowhead that pulled that. But I wanted to talk about a couple things that were kind of important kind of important uh one that's super important which is the reputation updates coming in 7.1 quarter stars and the arcway dungeons uh unlock will now be account wide which is really nice because you have to get attunement for that um personally though i personally think they shouldn't have done that that's just my opinion i'm sure a lot of you're gonna be like wow fuck bell again that's just my opinion only because i i i feel like you should work for it but i guess if you work for it on one tune it's as good as the others um so it does unlock account wide which is is nice especially if you have alts that need to do um like the mythic plus versions of those and uh you no longer have to get friendly rep with all the factions to unlock world quests for alts 
Keep in yeah. mind, this is for alts only. This is not mains. Um, so only one set has to have everything mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that's okay. But yeah, it's not bad. It's great for the people who want a power level. I can testify. I don't or I can testify to this being like the best thing ever. I, I want to say that I think the not having to unlock the world quest on the alts is a good thing. Um, because that does make it easier for you to gear alts. However, I do want to make a point, and I wonder if you guys feel the same way. So we've or changed, you. we've made it easier for alts, for world quests, and for some Suramar things. Were we going to address the profession situation, or were we going to continue to leave it like it is? Now, I don't mind it because I like having to work hard for stuff. It doesn't bother me. It, it is difficult because I don't plan on maxing out a ton of alts right away, so there's going to be professions that I'm going to have to buy. So I, I get why they did that, but I'm just wondering, my, my worry here with making it easier for alts is that we're going to go down a slippery slope of... We've gave everybody really difficult things to do, and now people have bitched, and we're going to give them easy stuff. I think the changes they made that they're making in 7.1 for the reputation are great, but if you look at some of the posts from from on Wowhead's Facebook post about it, people were like, well, what about doing this, and why can't we do this? When we start making things easier is when the slippery slope happens, and we start catering. That's called Lords of Draenor. But yeah, we start catering to people that are QQing because they have to work for stuff. Now, I'm not talking bad about the ones that not. you know I'm, I'm not saying anything i'm just saying the game isn't supposed to be easy guys it isn't supposed to be a face roll for you to log in and get what you need done this suramar stuff i barely got my good samaritan and you know what felt so great the fact that it took me a while to get and it wasn't fucking easy literally it made it that much better to me i literally did like hands in the air yes i was so excited but I, I feel i'm very leery of changes like this because i feel like this puts them on the downward slope to just Catering. To me, though, it's just beginner gear. Like this, you know, more content's coming out, and the gear's that much right. better. It's not. It's not the end of the world. I. It's not I even feel about what you're gear, saying, though, right? It's just in general the ease of of going through the content. But I guess since it's for alts, I, I can't really. I mean, if say... it's for alts, I mean, I guess it's fine. Like if it's your main, like like Bell, your main, it took forever to do a lot of stuff. Uh, same thing, Hots, Jimma, Lycan, myself, like. I'm nowhere near where I, I would like to be, but that's because my outside wow life. But how me, much do so. you love that you have to keep working? Like even with you not being able to play that often, you have to work hard for it. You can't just log in and it's it's okay for you to not. It's do not it. really challenging though. It's just time consuming, which yeah, I agree. That's, that's, you that's, you don't just that's, award that's people hard. because it takes time because that's part of an MMO. You have to work right. and spend mm -hmm. time. But it's just such low beginner gear. I mean, it's just it's it's irrelevant. It's like. But, uh, flying, you know, you get flying on one well, it's tune. It's not even about the gear, because so you get other right. stuff from the world quests, and the gear, really, you're right, because that comes from so many other sources that I, th I think I just worry that when we make one change to make it easier, yeah, we're making it too easy. I worry that we go on that downworld spiral and it's... we start catering to the people that are are. I don't know what the proper. I don't think mean. it's anything to be alarmed about for this particular change. Yeah. I don't think it's. Uh, this alarmed. is this is where their mindset has to be coming from. Like I, I'm not. I, I really enjoy the thought of the changes because I now have five one tens that I would like to do everything on all in one day, but it it yeah, kills kind of me impossible. to want to do that. Yeah, like, but there's people who don't want to quest to get all the way to one ten. They want to do dungeons, and so requiring them to go out to quest, I can see where it would be a good thing, but at the same time. Just because it isn't our fancy and we want it this way and we want it hard, what's to make it say that, you know, they have to suffer through it once and now they'll never have to do it again. I mean, it, it sucks for the people who, who have put the time into it to have it kind of made it easy for alts. For the, right, right, for those that have already been leveling alts yeah. and working on mm -hmm. artifact weapon and stuff. Yeah, but maybe but, this is I mean, something they the address time. because of that. True. Yeah, and like, I, I mean, I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I think it's great. I, I personally am glad because I like the Suramar stuff, so I like that I can do it easier, you know, on my alts and stuff like that. And the world quest thing, I think that's going to be great, and it's going to make it a lot easier. I just, I guess I just get worried. I get worried when I see nerfs to things or, or changes right. because I feel like as long as it's alts, I, I guess that's okay. Um, I yeah. yeah, I don't see this making too big of a change. I mean, there's been people for years that have been making or asking for Blizzard to make reputation account wide. 
That I'm a little on the fence about. I'm like, I could go either. I'm not gonna lie. Think. I would love to have that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes and no. Yeah. And, and my only fear is with this whole thing with with the Nightfall on is that if they go ahead and open up Quarter Stars and Arcway for everybody, even on your alts, you're gonna have more scrubs. I'm sorry, it sounds like an elitist, no, but you're but gonna you're have more right. scrubs. People that, that are in there. It. Right, because it's not something to just to walk in and say, okay, I can do it, and, and I'm, I'm level 110. Especially the Arcway. Yeah. That's an hour right. and the, a half freaking dungeon. Well, it took the me difference is, is The difference is you can't queue for those two. You have to yeah, but you have, put well, yourself in looking for You're right, first. because pre-made finder doesn't matter anyway. you got to be 875, and you have to link your Xavius kill to be able to right. kill Xavius on normal. I'm going to rant about that in Bell's Bites later, because that's, <laughs> that's on my list yeah. of things. But So, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about those two dungeons as much. Um, I mean, the, I think the biggest hit overall is just going to be the unlocking world quest and, and I, be able that I do, to that. I do I do appreciate that from a questing standpoint, because you are right. When you're, when you're doing alts, you do want to go through the content rather quickly because it is an alt and I right. have several that I need to level just for their profession so um, I mean you're going to have to quest anyway for profession so that's kind of not a valid argument because you might as well love questing because you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life because that's <laughs> the way that Legion set up you're just going to quest yep. even right. to be able to attune for Karazhan which we're going to talk about that in a few minutes you have to do questing you have to do missions like there's things that they still force you through um, to be able to do that so I mean I guess as long as they just stop and not as long as they don't continue that um, with making things easy I think I will don't do it to everything this is yeah. minor overall Context, and make sure really. we're not just exactly right. it's yeah. too, it just scares me when I see stuff like that uh, so if there was a vendor where you just clicked yes for your new legendary you'd have a reason to freak out I'm sure everyone would be happy right. if, they, if they like if they post tomorrow and say they're increasing drop chance for legendaries I'd probably not be happy about it not because I don't want a legendary because I do want a legendary but I enjoy because Azure would get another seven right. <laughs> right but I enjoy not knowing when I'm gonna get one right and it's yeah. forcing me I'm doing every world quest I can I'm doing all the mythic pluses and I'm I'm enjoying aspects of the game because I want to try for a better chance at the legendary, and I appreciate I appreciate Blizzard making it difficult. So didn't they say the longer you go without one, that the better the your chances there's increase? There's a safety feature, but we don't know the numbers on that safety feature. Oh, we, we talked about that. It could be I, like a point yeah. two three five point five. It could the be <laughs> level of difficulty of what you're doing increases yes. your chances. Yes, for sure. For yeah. sure. Which is why you see them from Mythic Pluses so often. Um, I, I know it's bound to happen eventually. They're going to increase it, but it's going to be in the same regards to, to them nerfing a dungeon so people can, you know, finish it for no, before the next dungeon comes out. I don't think that should affect the out. legendaries. I would be very unhappy if I if it's, I see that. It's going to have to eventually because they want everyone to have all the legendaries by the end of the expansion. So, right, but the expansion's I mean, a very long expansion because they're focusing shit. on patches. So, I mean, we've got we're in here for yeah, a while. But you in also here. have to think about how long do you do? How long are people going to put up with not really getting legendaries? Like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Since, since legendaries, since legendaries are not the rule, they're the exception. You would put up with it for two years because in previous People content, can put up with not getting legendaries for ten. Years. I mean, but it'll affect those raiders. Like when with with Hots's raid group, you know they could leave Hot aside, Hots aside because they've got another mage with a, a legendary where legendary. where he well, could be more skilled. That's when the problem. Well, they should. You should consider your life choices then. It's the, but I this mean, the thing. It's not your life choices, right? It's is, not. You're, you're I'm, out, not, I'm not. I would never tell somebody they couldn't raid because, or I would never pick okay, one so raider over can, the other but, because of a legendary. You're, this is you're this is Happy though. Land though, where where yeah, we're, we're not... building a Happy Land where everyone's raiding. Hot's world isn't so as accepting or or yeah. people who are pushing I'm not, progression. I'm not even asking that for my sake. It's like, all right, so yes, legendaries aren't needed, but depending on which legendaries you get. Yeah. They can some completely are, some, change a class. Yeah, the stats on some are crap. Yeah. True. Like, <clears throat> That's true. So, I mean, like, one of the other mages got the chess piece that gives him a shield whenever he blinks. Granted, oh. like, if he uses that at the right times, so he'll live longer than the other yeah. mages. But the uh, at our level, we're not really necessarily worried about living because our healers got our backs. But we're more so worried about damage. Now we have a mage oh, yeah. that has the Dragon's Breath belt who does ridiculous damage anytime that there's more than one target so mm -hmm. it's like you have you have to throw it's a, it's a hit or ask. miss yeah. you have to ask yourself how long am i willing to put up with this 
But at the same time, it, Blizzard has to ask themselves, how long are people willing to go without, you know, right. it's a, 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 at least a better percent? Because those people already have terrible luck to begin with, so they need some kind of help getting their stuff up there. But, I mean, I've got one. If, it's not If you, if you haven't got one on your main that. level on alt, you'll probably get one in a week. Yeah. That's usually that's, how it works. Well, look at... Look. <laughs> You know, you're talking game changers. Look at mine. Mine that that gives me the empowered rune weapon gives me two charges and increases the or yeah, it gives me like five percent faster uh, you know cooldown on it. So it is definitely a game changer. You know, I've gone from you know pulling 180k DPS to pulling over 200. You know, just because of that ring. Okay, I mean, we're not there too. I'm happy to yeah. see you way up there, Lycan. You know. Today, with my gear, it's on 857. I'm pulling 238 on, on Xavius, and that's a perfect time for that because now I have four empowered rune weapons that I can pop, refresh all my runes, and with the new machine gun build on, on Frosty Case, it's just you're machine just sitting there. Chili. Yeah, you're just sitting there spamming Frost Scythe and just putting out the damage. It's ridiculous. But, you know, I, I've seen other ones for, for DKs that they're looking at it going, it's garbage. And a lot of the other shit is garbage. I think there's a pair of boots that are good for, for DKs, and that's it. The rest of the stuff they've given us, just it's not even worth picking up. It's actually almost better just to take the other stats. I'm yeah. glad Hot said that. It made me think when he said, really, we're expected to all get a legendary or legendaries by the end of the expansion. That's very encouraging. I, I, yeah. I just would like to see it be difficult and just for a little while longer. I right. enjoy the not knowing, and that's a, it's a good surprise element for me. And it, I enjoy I getting 810 gear out of the emissary. Cache. That really, oh, and you lead me to I'm my saying. next point that I, something does need to be done about that because that does not scale, and nothing is more frustrating than doing that. And I don't even really need the reputation anymore because I'm almost exalted with everything. So. Mm -hmm. I really need don't Blizzard like. to stop giving me 815 fucking gear. My item level is 851. I, I need mean, you to yeah, just don't give me any do gear. It. But I would rather you not give me any gear. Give me gold. Give me... Yeah. Give me. I just would prefer Make you to not DOA. give it to me. That or, way I can give it to an alt. Valid action. This yeah. legendary situation, though, might, when you compare it to what I think you're going to say for the Xavius, like having the Xavius kill, might make you agree with maybe... No, so and I, I don't even think, say. I mean, my, my my approach to the game is very different than a lot of people's, including HOTS. I, I approach the game very differently, and, and I think that that's just one of those things. Um, and it just, you know, it it is what it is. I, I mean. I don't think the legendary buff, so to say, will happen for one, maybe two raid tiers. But they're also looking at a way to buff the legendaries as we go through the expansion. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Mm. I bet you anything you're going to have to buy something to upgrade it. The same yeah. way with the ring from last mm -hmm. extension. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, just, I, I just want to relish in the unknown just a little while longer because it is driving like, me to do yeah. more like, like things. Like relish? Yeah, I like, you stuff. know, with a little bit of mustard. But I, I enjoy the every time I complete an emissary, oh, am I going to get one? Am I going to get one? And I'm going to be really sad when I do get one. I'm going to be super happy, but I'm going to be sad because then... The thrill's kind of gone for me. But so. soon you're gonna not be able to muster the fact that you're not catching up, and it's gonna, it's gonna frustrate wow. you. Check you out. I, I think it's Bars. really that was really awful. <laughs> that was really that was, awful. Well, yeah, everyone wants a legendary. The I know. It's awful. I don't really have one either. You said mustard. Yeah. Relish uh, the fact. Relish the fact. But I oh, personally do not feel like I'm terrible because I don't have a legendary. So I'm no. pulling with your the raid. raid I'm pulling what the raid requires, and I'm happy with that. Yeah, so you're good, but you're also, like, let's say you weren't and you were slightly down. You've got secret sauce. He's going to bring you in, right? People will throw hots aside if you don't, if he's not pulling the numbers up. So you're right. It's two different worlds, but yeah. I think also when we talk about that Xavius kill as well, like, it sucks when you're not being invited, and you could get left out from not pulling enough DPS because you're missing that legendary ring or, or piece or whatever. Are you talking about yourself? No, he's talking about uh, no, what I'm going to complain feel... about because I've been complaining about it for a couple days. Uh, well, I have feeling, I don't know, not based on her talking to me. I just have a feeling like, is it too early to talk about no, it? No, or... we can actually, because I'm doing PvP for Bells Bites anyway. So what what had happened with Xavius is before the guild killed Xavius, I needed it to complete my Good Samaritan, right? And and I want Suramara's number one fan favorite, but it's my it was my end game goal because I wanted to get Good Samaritan before Pete right. before the new patch because there's gonna be nine new quest lines introduced. So I wanted to I'm make off. sure I wanted to be done and I needed an Xavius kill in order to be able to move forward with my Good Samaritan, which I got today. But I I thought, okay, 
one time, one time, I'm going to break my own rule and I'm going to see if I can hop into a pug to get this kill because my need to complete Suramar came before my need for anything else. So I hop, I go to the pre-made finder. Now I'm 851. I'm no, I'm not, I'm not a scrub. scrub. Like I worked really hard. I'm good. So I know the fight, literally. They don't know you do though. I go in there and they're like, now this is normal, mind you. 860, right. 865, 875 for a normal Xavius kill. And this was, I I only wanted Xavius. I didn't want to do the raid. Then right. um, for normal Xavius kill, link Xavius ahead of the curve. What the fuck? Hello? I need the kill. How, how do I, am I expected to link you my Xavius kill if care. I'm trying to get my Xavius kill? They how is care. that even human? Like, hey, you know what would help? If they increase legendary drop chance. No, it's not even nothing was <laughs> even but nothing yeah. was even mentioned yeah. about legendary and they didn't even right, say, right. you know, need a minimum no. DPS. The they issue right. it didn't say anything about DPS. It said your minimum item level needed to be eight seventy five and you need to link your norm and this was for normal guys. For a normal Xavius kill. Hi, I'm here because I need Well, they this just kill. wanna burn it. They don't wanna be in there for but like you know, they they want a four minute fight instead of, you know, right. a seven. I and totally and it get sounds that. like they're carrying guilties too. Which is That's fine. Exactly I will help you carry. But I literally, I messaged one guy and just said, listen, I know the fight. Here's my DPS. Here's my gear. I don't have the head of the curve because my guild hasn't killed him yet. Why do I need a, to, to link you an achievement for a kill that I'm trying to pug into? I'm not pugging in because I have nothing fucking better to do. I need an Xavius kill. Well, and how would I be curve, expected yeah. to link my guild, my Xavius kill, if I'm trying to pug an Xavius kill? Like, and ahead of the curve is the heroic. Right. It's not regular either. How is that even right. humanly possible? I am trying to do this, and I'm trying to do it well. Now, on the tip side of that, I've been, I, I got into a pug where the guy was like super chill. Well, that was really super chill because it was fucking 17 wipes, and I'm like, guys, I oh, love really? you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, like, I love you, and we're good. Uh, I'm not saying there shouldn't be requirements, right. guys. I'm not saying that. No. Maybe we don't need, for a normal run, maybe we don't need 875 requirement. Maybe we could be a little bit more realistic, and we could be not complete douchebags, and maybe do 850, right? Maybe do the right. raid minimum, whatever. For fuck's sake. You're, 875 for a normal normal right. this was not That's heroic guys much. i think 845 is the minimum item level for but yeah. even even if you wanted to go above that right because people don't want to wipe i totally get it right i would agree go 860 with, go even even 860 would be well I, and you're less of a liability because your range dps is right. not like you're a lower right. item level but healer like, or tank but you, for a normal no, run thought, you want I me know, to I link like my this. xavius head of the head of the curve achievement yeah what? Ridiculous. Uh, what planet am I on? You, you, I, might, you might as well just link a, a mythic kill now, too while you're at it. That is my now, gripe on premades because premades do not make your life better. That's not what they're built for in this game. The premades were built for in this game for people to do what they need to do and to do it quickly and to do it while disincluding people that may or may not be good at it but by putting unrealistic expectations on players. And that is my problem, and that was actually going to be part of my rant for Bell's Bites, is unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. I'm totally fine giving you my 150 fucking percent because that's what I do. I'm not going to pug into some shit, and I'm not going to be crap. Because that's not how I am. I get but it. they not don't every... know that. It's, and it's not, it's, it's not even a it, shot at you. But it feels like it, but they... But it's the community in general that yeah. that's the standard we have set. We don't set the standard of realistic expectations we have set the standard of two minute fucking kills you want to know why we've set right. that standard because we clear fucking mythic world first in the first 16 hours of an expansion that's why because we have Raid unrealistic expectations easy. that's why i mean now the counter argument to this and don't it's get me wrong i don't it's like easy. it but i'll let you know that our mage is 873 i think one of our mages at least and he gets declined from mythic plus runs for plus two so why take that as you will? What, and what's the reason for him his being declined? The class. Yeah. Mage. Why I'll mages are nope. OP as fuck right now? I would love to have a mage <laughs> run mythics with me. I got declined from one group, and I kept doing it because I knew why they were doing it. But I kept replying to the same friggin' group. I'm an 857 frost DK that pulls 230 k DPS and, and and a mythic regular, just a regular mythic, no right. plus. And they kept declining me after the fifth time I've applied. And they're like, we don't want frosty K's because they can't pull the DPS. 
So I'm like, okay, so I'll take my, my 230K DPS and take it elsewhere. And as soon as I said that, I got an invite. Well, yeah. Because and it that's, reflects what you have. That goes along no, with what we were talking about previously about people being they're uneducated. They hear somebody right, say yeah, Mage right. DPS or yeah. Frost DK suck, but they don't they don't watch the news. So they don't see that Frost DK's got a buff. Or they that's people that are uneducated and just make the assumption and that's that actually is a good point because it's no longer about deciding if a person has the capability. It's we've already mm -hmm. we've already tried and convicted this person before we even know. Yeah. Our yep. a why your mage would be declined is beyond me. Our arcane mage, uh, normal geared. He's not even normal geared. He's mythic plus geared, which is like what eight forty five. He pulls yeah. three hundred fifty fucking k DPS without even breaking a sweat, and he's an arcane mage, literally. So, riddle me this, Bell and Lycan. Why don't you guys invite me to mythic runs? Because you're never on. You're always playing. You're Pokemon oh Day. yeah, yeah. Let's he's go. You like ba basically what you say to me is link me your kill. Link well, me well, your wait, I would never say that to you. I, no, I know, but you say it in a different form. You don't invite well, me, is what I'm saying. Well, you're never supposed... online when we're playing, ever. Right. And weren't we supposed to run PvP one night? And you, hey, like it, let's do some PvP. And, like, <laughs> and then he's I'm like, like oh, and oh, I oh said, JK, I have to get on my bike ride for my 10-kilometer bike ride, JK. <laughs> Hatch and eggs. Um, <laughs> I sat there for an hour waiting on his ass, and he just logged off. But here's the thing, too, with like it, it, so for me as well, for chat, like I did message him, and then I didn't message him back. I logged off. But if you're waiting there for an hour and I haven't wrote back, hey, Jim, are we still doing those arenas, right? It's not so happening. You're not. It's just not shoot me a message, man. You know what I mean? But I think. And, and, go, and, and with these mythics, they're not hard people. I mean, give people they're a break. Like, really. we we actually did a mythic with. Uh, Kalen, he's our one of our hunters, and he's trying to level his DK and was wanted to go with Was that the black or cold? Didn't we do like a level seven Keystone because it was somebody's bright idea? No, no, this it was me, Hagen Doss, and a bunch of other guys. But we carried Kalen on his tank. I was tanking the Mythic, and he the only he didn't even get like any of these his other weapons. He just has his Maw of the Dam. That's it. So he couldn't switch out of specs or nothing. And we were able to carry him at doing 110 DK DPS. They're not hard people. Give people right. a break. You know, yeah. especially the regular methods. And, and that actually, before we continue doing the, the news, that does bring me to a good point regarding the Mythic Pluses. Now, I've been a little late in my full hardcore PvP, which that'll that'll be happening next week because we're going to be starting RBGs. But um, I've been doing a lot of Mythic Pluses with the Keystones. I'm super obsessed with the Keystones right now. I'm literally like when somebody's like, oh, I got a level six. And I'm like, oh, I'm in. Sign me up. Can I go? Can I go? Can we go? Please, please, please. No. And the other day... I ran with four different groups. Whenever one would leave, we would bring in another one. And I did Mythic Plus all day long. I'm so excited to see what my chest is going to look like on Tuesday. Now, we didn't get like... The, we didn't get the two or three chests, but we did 90% of it. We completed in the time limit to get the upgraded right. Keystone and all that. But um, I, I like that I have not gotten tired of doing the dungeons i i haven't no. gotten to that as point. long as you have a good group and they know what they're doing and they're willing to perform mechanics the right way and stuff like that then it's it's positive and the keystone like, because it's a challenge like we did back to back quarter stars like four times in a row because we kept we had a better keystone each time yeah, and i haven't i have a nice in my, my bag right by now. far quarter stars is my favorite even at i think we decided it was going to be a good idea to do a mythic level six we were like oh well, let's just go ham well it might not have been but it was fun and i enjoyed it <laughs> and i but i do enjoy that i somebody can have a mythic keystone and we can go in and do it and i can it, it'll be a challenge no and matter every what time level we do it that's a good. Yeah. That's a good. Well, they if did, they didn't do something like that, dungeons would be that much more the boring, and you wouldn't have activity. Was so smart on Blizzard's, like literally, and it's infinite, right? It's going to continuously grow. They're not, you know, there's not going to be a like. They're literally as, as you, far Diablo. as your that's eyes a, can stretch it. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing, and I think um, I see more Mythic Plus people in constant in the guild, and it's really nice to see that they're continuing to make the content relevant, but I'm super obsessed with the Mythic, so if you guys have not done Mythic Plus with Keystones, go and do your thing. Find a good group of people that run the same time you do, and just go and... and 5 a.m. right here. Work your little heart out, man, because those Mythic Keystones are so much fun. I literally have not PvE'd this much in a really long time, and it's Hots, been, what do you think? I think Hots has a... a oh, does, does he something. have an elite... An elite. Oh, I don't know. I don't I think know. pluses are fun. Like they're fine. Well, I'm excited to see where do they go. Like I want to know what starts happening whenever you get up to like thirteen or 14, fourteen. Yeah, some high yeah. ass. Number. I think but, those kind of change. Yeah, I mean, they're under forty percent. 
I one, haven't passed I, seven yet, though. I haven't done one past Mythic Seven. Mm, I've done five. That's the best I've done. Yeah, I haven't done I think, it. I'm scared. I think my highest is nine. So I have five. a four for Halls of Valor, and I would shoot myself in the face. Because oh, Halls of Valor four is easy. Don't, don't, well, don't three, we couldn't the beat the timer. Thing. You I think these are some of the changes we take for granted, too, when we talk about, wow, right, like how fine-tuned it is. Like, I mm -hmm. think these type of changes make the game that much, they'll give it more longevity because the possibilities are endless with the same system. Yep. Right. Similar to when you guys were saying, I think you were talking, Bell, well, like the way that the mobs level with you in Legion, if they did that for the old world, which is a lot of work, of course, you don't out-level Duskwall and Marsh so fast you can enjoy it. So Yeah, it, you're not pushing to get to that next map, yeah. right? Because I'm, uh, I'm... Unless real... you have Danger Dave on your map, then you're uh, fucked. Well, so. Then you need to run. <laughs> if you have Dave. Didn't matter. Or, or <laughs> depends. It depends what's, how you picture Danger uh, Dave. So I like how you said Dusk, you know. They good. have <laughs> uh, for 7.1, they do have some profession updates. So we talked previously about um, there being a Blood of Sargeras vendor in... Um, in Dalaran, you'll be able to trade your Blood of Sargeras. I urged you guys to save those, bank those if you're not using them in crafting. Just keep keep doing them. Um, yeah. And you'll be able to trade them for materials, which is really nice for those of us who don't want to level alts right now and start doing the quest for professions. We could take right. advantage. So um, most of the materials you receive have been reduced from 20 per blood down to 10. I think in testing, they probably realized that people weren't making any more money in the auction house which is probably which is good i don't want to i don't want to be able to go and buy mats from a blood of sargeras vendor all the time i think it's nice to give business to to the people in the auction house that do the work for the farming i do right. i don't mm -hmm. mind doing that at all i think that's just the nature of economy and i think that that's a good thing so they did reduce it um from 20 down to 10 so you get you'll get 10 of that item for one blood of sargeras now the only exception is the unbroken tooth the unbroken claw you'll get 20 of those your stallright rose you'll only get three for one blood of sargeras because that's like Outside of mana crystals, that's like your profession crack, right? Um, your right. fell slate, you'll get five, and your laylight uh, shards, you'll get three. So uh, I think those are good tunings. I think that's... That's not bad. No, that's not yeah. bad at all. It used to be five, but... Yeah, and I have a lot good. of Blood of Sargeras. I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot because of the world quests. Um, I mean, you have way more than me, but I'm yeah, sitting at like 100, 150, you know? I know people have like a 1,000, yeah, but I don't have that time. So. I don't have that. I, I mean, I get them from World Quest, and and sometimes I get them from like my inscription stuff, um, yeah, and the other stuff. But I'm ninety nine percent of them because when you do the emissary quest, you do whatever random shit that you need for the emissary, so it ends up working mm -hmm. out. Uh, the traders yeah. also going to sell an order resource uh, cash, which you can gain two hundred order resources. Um, which yeah, but that's be, not. That's You'll be shit. able to the, so the cat the the box that you get you can send to your alts for resources. All right, well that's kind of cool, but at the same time, like world quests give you that's easily for, four that's to for five alts. K. So that and that's actually pretty smart because yeah. you're not doing a ton of world quests probably on your alts, right? You're focusing on your main. That actually is pretty smart. I like that. That's not world bad. quests are boring. I love world quests. Oh no, I just, I just go dot everything and let everyone kill everything I'm they're not hard they're just they're not exciting um, when when you're working at 80 to 100,000 for your next artifact power yeah world great. crests are like crack right now well yeah me. that's all you got right so I'm way behind those uh, I'm embarrassed to say I just yeah. for alchemy potion of the prolonged power um, which the first rank is a random drop uh, rank two you have to be revered with nightfallen now what's cool about this specific thing is um you increase all stats by 2,500 for one minute. Wow. That's... Okay. Is it... It's not 2,500 times. It's just... All stats like by 20... 2,500 for one minute. That's like that's forever. So long. Yeah. yeah. That's going to get nerfed. What's the cooldown on it? Isn't it like a one minute cooldown? It's a one minute cooldown. Now, the offset to that, obviously, is your, your Blood of Sargeras is going to be used for that. So they've said here, and this is why Blizzard's fucking genius, they've said, okay, we're going to give you the Blood of Sargeras vendor, but we're also going to give you this potion that you need only Blood of Sargeras and a Crystal Vial for. So you're going to have to pick and choose what do you want to use your Blood of Sargeras right. for because we're giving we'll you... We'll make some more valuable. Yeah, we're, we're giving this super awesome thing to you, 2,500 increase to all stats, not one, not two, mm -hmm. all of your stats for one minute, which you, that means you could take on Suramar, literally, and do... True, yeah. Like, really you could weird. do whatever you need to do. You make five, uh, ten potions and be good to go. Are there any restrictions to that? Like, are they soul-bound? 
No, not soulbound, but like, can you use them in raid? Are they only open world? I don't yeah. think it says. Uh, there's yeah, the, as of this moment, it doesn't say any restrictions. Okay. But yes, imagine a world where your raid team, right? Your raid team goes fucking pew, 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 oh, pew. Shit. But I will Wait, double check to find out if that is if it is usable in raids and see what that means. I. Since it's a that, potion, that would mean one-time use because that's how right, potions like, are in raids. Well, yeah, I pop well, it ahead of time. When, once it. right before right. I once that. All right, but now let me <laughs> let me tell you. All right, so one blood of Sargeras gets you 10 of each item, right? So you have to spend at least five to get one flask because you need... Se or no, yeah, around five to get one flask. And then you have to spend... Let's see. I would say around the same amount to get two potions or four potions, roughly. Oh yeah. So, one blood of Sargeras for one potion, or five for two. You just did that... math, and I'm not really good at math. Yeah. My brain so, started to hurt. So it takes four. Just use of Two different kinds of herbs, and then two Forgot of the because... leaf for one potion. It takes seven of that one herb that's like crack and then 10 of each or two 10 of two other kind of herbs for a flask for one flask oh the flat the herb but the flask you can get the, if you're on a raid team the flasks are provided yes uh yeah, yeah. sometimes right now mats are really really hard to get which is why they're adding the the vendor yeah but so they're hard to get now, if you're a tightwad with your gold well yeah i am well, but it's... either way, one Blood of Sargeras and one vial equals one potion. It, it, you just need flask in those potions in your set. If, you're, if your whole raid team pops one of these, 2,500 of all your stats. Yeah. What there does that even look be... like? I'm going to go test that out in PTR that... this week because I want to know what that looks like. I, will... I guarantee you they're going to restrict that to world questing. Because I like need to know what only. that means. Um... Yeah, I can't see them balancing that. Because, because of the minute. Like, if it lasted 10 seconds, then it wouldn't matter. I will confirm. Five seconds. I will confirm. It doesn't yeah, I mean, say one way or the same. other. Um... Like, drop yeah. a minute to, to five, 10 seconds, even seven, if I could put it in the middle. But... Uh, there's no way in hell that they're going to let that go in a raid. Like, a whole minute of full-blown stats, you're going to nuke any boss that you do. Someone could go away from their keyboard and do more DPS than someone that has that didn't pop it. So, And then throw yeah. and then throw Vantus Rune on top of it? Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's a thousand versatility, but still. They're adding that's some, for the entire fight. They're adding <clears throat> some uh, additional recipe ranks to leather working like the Drums of the Mountain. They're adding the rank three. Tailoring, they're adding uh, rank three, which it's the same size bag. It's just uh, for the Im imbued silk weave. It just increase, or lessens the mats by doing the rank three. Um, or you could have 40 hex weave bags in your bank. Right. The exciting thing here is going to be the fishing because they've added a ton of new bobbers. Um, like... Mm -hmm. You that got, is exciting. Like Question Pepe, <laughs> Murloc head bobber, Pepe, tugboat, cat head, can of worms, wooden Pepe, like uh, squeaky duck. I just think I it's nice for those that like to fish. It gives you a different visual that you can do. Um, and most of them that are world drops. Has a shit ton of oh, gold like fish. Yeah, well, and they're world drops, too, so um, you get them by fishing, which I just think it's really cool. I would like to have a murloc head bobber. I think that just adds kind of a different visual um, to the normal visuals that we get. So that's there. I'm sure they're going to be continuously adding to the reputations and world quests because that's what they've stated they're doing. But those were the kind of the things that I wanted to make sure. I think I'm going to stop like doing like PVE stuff and just go fish and mine and herbalism and stuff and just make a shit ton of gold and then retire and retire and all my gold that's what i yeah mean. Uh, i mean i think you're you think you're ready for retirement sitting on a mountain of gold i'm so poor right now there's no i don't make any gold in, it goes fast in light of that uh for patch 7.1 on the 14th at 11 a.m uh pacific time live on twitch Twitch.tv slash Warcraft is going to be a developer Q&A uh, with Ian Hezekostas. So if you want to check that out, if not, we'll have coverage. It doesn't sure, matter yeah. either way. Uh, but yeah. he'll be addressing, now that we've been testing in PTR, he's probably going to address uh, a lot of things with a lot of questions. So, uh, And 
I'm going to be talking about this in Bell's Bites, but Arena Championships yes. for North America, uh, North American did happen this <sighs> weekend, and uh, I'm happy to report that Method did I take the win. I watched it while I was eating my breakfast. Method did take the win, and it was a glorious win. It was beautiful, and I want, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I saw out of some of these teams uh, for Bell's Bites because I watched Saturdays. I watched while on the move. Me and the husband went and did, um, we did errands. So that means he drove and I watched on my phone. Mm -hmm. And when you plug it, Bluetooth it to your car, he got to hear the audio through the car. So we were listening to it while I was watching it on my phone, which was pretty nice. Was he kind so, of enjoying I'm just so it? glad, yeah, that, that Dark is, is into it at the same time. That'd be like, yeah, and he loves like it. hey, honey, go ahead and drive while I do it. Yeah, and then he loves it. Shit. So he was like, hey, can we maybe turn it up? And I'm like, well, this is as loud as my phone goes. And he goes, well, let me show you something cool. And then he, he does this thing and he's like, listen, it's through the car. I knew that already. I just don't, it's not a feature I use because it's usually just me in the car. But yeah, so we were right. driving down the freeway and we were just watching and listening yeah, to Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we go to the vape shop because I have to get a new mod and I'm standing right as we open the door. Um, I'm going to talk about it later, but Sea-Doo pulls off something out of his ass and saves himself from death at 15% left and literally is the reason that they won. And I'm screaming right outside the shop as we open the door. Everybody's staring at me. And I would have, have told you to leave. We don't accept Dark kind. says something like, you're embarrassing. And I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassing. When you scream at football, <laughs> I'm embarrassing. And then somebody's like, oh, you're not watching football? What are you watching? And I was like, esports. And then the sad time exactly. when somebody, somebody's like, what's an oh, esport? You got to go. Get out, of, get out of my store. Yeah, the guy's like, what's an eSport? And I'm like, it's nerd things you wouldn't understand, clearly. Obviously. So, yeah. yeah, there's that. It was really awful that people don't know what eSports are. So yeah. let's jump in. We are uh, a, lot, a little bit behind on time because we had really good conversation that I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, so let's jump into the uh, – I know – there was lore. Now, the original intention behind this lore was for you to have a video. The problem with the video is you have to be attuned uh, for Karazhan, which all your active followers need to be 850. I don't know if it's all of them. I still have not 100% confirmed that. No, nah, that, um, that take forever. I, no, I just mean like your active ones. I have not confirmed yeah. because I have had three followers at 850 for two days, and I still have not gotten the quest for my mission board um, in PTR. Mm -hmm. So, Karazhan, you have to be attuned to it. I will be putting out a guide. Uh, hopefully as soon as I can get in to start the quest, I'll be putting out a guide on what exactly you need, uh, but start making sure you're working on your, your followers. But I meant for you guys to have a video while Lycan was doing his lore uh, regarding the, it's, it's the bosses in Karazhan, right? It is. So it is. unfortunately, it, there's no video. Sorry. No, it's, it's all good. Um, my turn? Okay. A little bit on just, you know, the Karazhan itself and what we're actually going to see in their boss related Unfortunately, Karazhan is one of those places that does not have a whole ton of lore behind it. Um, there are some bosses that have it, and there are some that absolutely will not have any lore whatsoever. Um, but, you know, Karazhan is the home, study, and library of the Guardian Medivh. Mediv. Um, the area surrounding the Great Citadel actually explains a lot, and will give some background on why we're going to need, uh, why we're, this area is going to be so important for us to go into again. Um, so Karazhan sits in Deadwind Pass. Um, as many have noted, but few will admit to it, the land on which it sits is a similar to a shape of a human skull. Now, it actually was created by an explosion that weakened the area. There's a necrolite. Um, I'm going to butcher the name. It's Satio, I think is how you pronounce it. He had drained the life out of the land using Uthalesh which was also known as the Deadwind Harvester. This is the Affliction Warlock um, weapon. Uh, Medivh's mother, Agewind, created a tower around 600 years before the First War. Um, she was actually starting to fall under the thing of Sargeras, and she started to not trust the Council of Tears, fall and needed a place to hide and start practicing what she needed to do. It also helped that Deadwind Pass became a center where all the ley lines converged, and it was a highly magical place. Um, shortly after the second war came around, a paladin by the name of Dugan and two others entered Karazhan to investigate it. Uh, the surrounding areas of Duskwood were slowly becoming corrupt and the residents were worried about the towers um, and thought it was the culprit. As they invested it, investigated it, Dugan was killed in the process. Now, his daughters had actually come back years later to try to find out what the fate of their father was. Um, as they came through it, they realized that, unfortunately, anybody who dies inside Karazhan is now stuck in there permanently. Um, 
many of the other inhabitants haunt the place, including Moros, which was Medivh's butler, uh, Nellis Oran, which is Medivh's father, and many of the guests of the tower, the cook and uh, cook as well as some others. There's also a secret hidden area of Karazhan that has been mentioned in novels before, but never implemented inside the game uh, until now. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Just going to give a little bit more background on her. But why is Karazhan so important? Um, we understand who built it and why. We understand where it sits and why that's important. And, you know, the library itself would carry a vast knowledge to help destroy the Burning Legion. But if that were the case, you know, why wasn't it destroyed by Sargeras and his minions before? Well, because the tower is actually a portal directly to the nether. Um, by directly controlling Karazhan, the Burning Legion would have no more problem uh, dumping thousands of demonic forces right into Azeroth. Control the tower uh, of this tower is the utmost importance to the war involving the Burning Legion. Again, why not just destroy the tower? Well, I think it's a matter of the devil, or better of the devil you know than the devil you don't. Uh, who would, um, who knows what would happen to the area if it was actually destroyed? Portal could become unstable, could actually become closed, sure. But what if that's not ha what happens? What if it just opens up and just starts dumping demonic forces over from the Twisting Nether? Uh, probably would not be a good idea. So... We also have this area called the Upside Down, the Inverse or Low Karazhan. Um, this is where Medivh performs his most sacred, most secret experiments and studies. Um, only ever been mentioned again in game once. It was by Archmage Alvaro, which is the current tour uh, quartermaster. He sits there right in the uh, Violet Citadel, but um, it only has its roots really in the novel itself. Um, Alvaro suggested that Lower Karazhan was actually on another world uh, or possibly in Azeroth, but in another dimension. Um, what it is is an exact copy of Kara, but literally upside down. Um, the top floor, what would become actually the bottom floor of Lower Kar Karazhan, is where the lair of Mediv is. So if you've done the raid and you've gone to the very top, you've seen where Mediv's bedroom is. Well, imagine going upside down, walking on the ceilings, and of course the lower part would be his hidden secret lair that we have. What is awesome about the Return of Karazhan is that we actually finally get to see that. Some old favorites, some new favorites that we're going we're gonna to experiment. And I'm not going to be going over tactics, but I'm going to talk quickly on what the lore and the ones that are available. Now, in the trailer we've seen an undead assassin. Um, there's is a human, possibly a mage with the violet eye that's running around in terror. I feel as if he sees the Legion heading into Kar Karazhan and doesn't realize that Moros is up on the roof of the broken houses that are around it. Like I was saying, the Legion wants to come in and control the tower to utilize that to open a portal permanently to the Twisting Nether. Um, Moros, however, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss who he is, uh, sees these quote-unquote guests as a sign of that Mediv is actually going to be returning. And he is actually right, sort of. Um, some changes have been made to the instance, um, but that's to be expected, of course. Uh, instead of entering through the front, we actually will be using a service entrance, which has always been there, and you used to be able to get a key to go to the service entrance up top, but there's going to be a new side entrance that we're going to be actually entering in through. Once you're inside, the very first event you're going to head to, though, is the opera event. Um, and if anybody has done the opera event on the raid, it is actually one of my favorite uh, events that you go through. Um, there are three new versions of the opera event. These really have absolutely no lore references in game whatsoever, but uh, they're pretty damn cool. The events can be either, uh, it's called Beauty, Beautiful Beast, which is obviously a Beauty and the Beast reference. Um, Wicked, or if you've seen the musical Wicked, it has that reference. Nice. And... And my favorite is the West Falls story. Um, obviously, West Side story. <laughs> and and I'm, funny. I'm sorry, but I'm not. But there is something about seeing a murloc in a wig that made me giggle. Um, and, and some of the names are just, uh, they're, <clears throat> they're hilarious. Like the one guy is Toe, T-O-E. Uh, last name is Nee. So Tony from West Side Story. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's crazy. Um, even the big bad wolf is there. Actually, so 
when you defeat the opera event, you actually head backstage. There's a bunch of ads there, but you actually go to see the big bad wolf. What's neat about him is if anybody runs DBM, if you walk up to the big bad wolf, you ask him nicely, he'll actually do the the, the, the run away little girl, oh, run away, oh, and wow. he'll actually say it for you in the game. So it's pretty cool. And I love how the opera event in the raid. You know, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is actually going to play out. I only got to see the one fight you know, for Beautiful Beast that looked pretty nice. Once you've done clearing that huge amount of trash, there are three bosses you can head to. You have the Maiden of Virtue, Atumen the Huntsman, or Moros. The first we're going to cover are the two lesser bosses in terms of lore. Um, first being the Maiden of Virtue. Now, she shares the same model as the Maiden of Grief, which I think is from Halls of Lightning. Um, though it has never been confirmed that it is a true Titan construct, I certainly believe that this could be the case. And believe that the possessed Mediv would certainly love to experiment on a Titan construct to corrupt it. Uh, it stands at the end of a long ha hallway uh, of the, the guest chambers, which you pass um, virtuous ladies, or aka hookers and blow. Um, and then she's at the very end. Uh, I, I bet she I, is. Oh, yeah. She's a pimp. Now, I. I Again, not a lot of reference on her, but what was really cool, somebody on the forums actually put it this way. Maybe Mediv actually put this maiden of virtue here. Um, I can imagine him getting his guest drunk, having him go see these, you know, hookers and blow that are in these <laughs> guest chambers, and then locking the door behind him. Because if you hear some of the death calls and some of the calls during the battle, she's talking about purging your impure thoughts and things like that. Oh, wow. I can imagine him locking the door behind these people and have them just being completely just smited with holy light and having them scream in horror. And he did this just for his own amusement. Um, I could really just that that's how I kind of portray it. I like the way the guy had said it on the on the forums. Then there's Atman the Huntsman. And again, not much is really known about Atman, except that he has a horse named Midnight. And if you go in during a Dorna raid, you would get the fiery horse, the fiery reins, horse of the fiery reins. I think you could exactly get it. I have it, so cool you do get it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there's really uh, so not much information outside of that. I'm sorry about that. The His only member that has well. actually been confirmed uh, so a bit um, of a kill window there, uh, that I could find that kind thing. of a reference uh, to was uh, Anduin Lothar in the Brotherhood of the Horse. Again, no spirit wolves. Oh, now, the spirit wolves actually just came a out. very so obscure reference. These were integral. Here this the Brotherhood of the Horse was an integral part in the attack on Stormwind during the First War. There are a lot of motifs around Karazhan that point towards the Brotherhood. We know that they inhabited Karazhan at one point. We also know that the members of the Brotherhood were actually turned into the first Death Knights. Now, not the Arthas ones, but the Orcish Death Knights that were inhabited with by the Necrolites. Right. Um, so there were 20 of them originally. The only one confirmed was ever, ever was Anduin. But, you know, we may actually know of another undead horse rider who, who was also a Paladin and Apostle member of the Order. And that was a man by the name of Sir Thomas, uh, which we're going to actually going to see him here shortly, which is a.k.a. the Headless Horseman. Um, unfortunately, there is no information whatsoever. I can provide definitive proof that he is part of the Brotherhood, you know, at to men. Um, but if you go through, you actually see plaques and stuff on the wall that might lead the imagination to that. Next battle you actually head to is Moros. Um, now, Moros was or is the Castellan of Karazhan or the governor of the place. Right. He was up until Cadgar, one of only two other inhabitants of Karazhan outside of Medivh. Um, the other being Cook, and can you guess what his job title was? If you read the book, The Last Guardian, he will always be there. He was always there, always watching. Whenever you turned around, you expected to see Moros. He was boom. He just appeared like right there. Um, now, a little interesting fact that I remember from the book, and I and you actually get his blinders. But Moros used to walk the hallways wearing horse blinders. And this would prevent him to see any, you know, of these visions that would make him go mad. Um, he didn't want them to disturb him. Now, Moros was killed by Mediv when he did go insane with Sargeras at his full power. 
And it was the blood of the poor old man that led us, led Cadgar to finding the secret entrance to Lower Karazhan. I like to think that, you know, if you think of Moros, think of him as Albert Pennyworth from Batman. You know, he's the, you know, yes, Mr. Wayne, you know, uh, Master Wayne, I'm here for you. And he, he's right. that type of guy. He was really a benevolent person, but now he is trapped permanently in Karazhan at a party that he really doesn't know that's just going to continue to keep going on forever. Then we get to the final boss of the normal part of regular Karazhan, because, and that is the curator. The curator is just a guardian of the menagerie. He's an arcane construct that was created by Medivh to protect the library from unwelcome guests. Um, it has to be recalibrated by Medivh so that we so it doesn't go haywire, and we learn that in Karazhan. I'm not going to go into too much of a spoilers of you know the cutscenes, but. Again, a memorable boss from the raid. If you ever fought him, he was a raid wiper. Uh, and it's going to be neat to go back and to see him on a five man um, now that he's been weakened because he hasn't been around Medivh this entire time. Um, but with even though it's such a memorable boss, there's very little lore. Now, after defeating the construct, that's in when things go batshit crazy. You enter into a portal, and it transports you to the Upside Down Kara, where you start killing demons instead of the undead. You eventually come up to your first boss there, which is the Shade of Medivh. Now, if you don't know what a Shade is, it's an echo or a remnant of the original owner. I don't want to go too much in the ton of lore of Medivh. We've, we've gone over it so many times, you know, from the whole fetal possession to the coming of his powers to being of the Guardian. Um... But you do get to see him several times throughout the dungeon through cutscenes, through little things here and there. So when you're in there, your first time in there, go through every little corner. There's so much to see. Um, and he brings up to light a few things that we've been wondering about him, where he's been, what the hell has been going on. Um, so the boss fight's pretty cool. Um, and he is as powerful as he has ever been, even though it is his own shade. Now... Next, for those who are remembering the raid itself, you get to fight a mana worm. This was probably one of the coolest things. You're going through this. You end up going through this big twisty tunnel. You drop down. You're in the library. And the next thing you know, there's this huge ass mana worm. Until you start looking around, you see all these books that are bigger than you. You get shrunk down to about that size. Nice. And then remember the little mana worms that if you were in melee range, you couldn't kill them. If you, or, you know, you had to do physical damage. You had to do physical, yeah. not, not, ma not magical damage. Now it's a boss. Fuck. And yeah, and it is quite interesting. It was pretty neat. Did they Again, remove the the magical part of it? Or I was gonna they say, did. Oh, yeah, I would you hope so. You walk in there, and there's this huge ass purple chest, like you've been clicking in all these mythics and regular dungeons. And you go in there, you go to click on it, and it spawns the boss. So yeah, you can do physical and magical damage. Again, no lore really to go into it, but it was pretty pretty cool fight when I got to watch it. Um, finally. You get to the last boss. Now, you go to go through another one of these twisty tunnels, and you come upon the checkered floor. And you're going, oh, hell, got to do the chess event to get out of this. They've reinstituted the chess event, but in a little bit different. Instead of actually going in and moving the characters around, each one of these things actually move like a chess piece and will one-shot anybody getting caught in a way. Awesome remake of it. Gives that big callback of how important the chess event was before. Um, but definitely so soloable because they don't put any damage out. You just got to move your ass out of the way. Not right. really a boss either. I think there's absolutely no loot. But they drop replica items from the old raid in there. So if you're looking for some transmog shit, really cool thing. Make sure you do the chess event. Do they make like, um, I mean, you can go get the replica yourself. But do they make it like enhanced looking maybe? I would assume I so. I didn't really see a difference in in the few pieces that I got to see. Okay, because I already have yeah. tier four, so I mean. But I think I like a lot of the weapons in there. Uh, what was the weapon? The the big axe. Um, you know what I'm talking about. There was that big ass axe you got off of the, the executioner. Yeah. 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 You know, I think that's in there. I didn't get to see if there was a difference on that because I actually used that for quite some time. But pretty cool when you go in there. We're talking about like ten years ago, whenever I had that as a Fury Warrior, right? And then they they dropped dual wielding, and I had two of those. I actually dual wield that thing on a DK Frost DK, matches some really nice blue Frost DK items, so it's pretty cool. 
Um, finally, you get to the last boss. Um, what you do is you get teleported. And people will probably ask what the fuck's going on, but you end up on top of one of these Legion ships that we've seen during the invasions. And when you get there, you get to fight a demon named by, named, I'm going to butcher this one too, Viz Adum, uh, the Watcher. I'm just going to keep it going with Viz Adum. Now, Viz Adum <laughs> is an observer, right. uh, which are a race of demons native only from the Twisting Nether. Right. Uh, Viz Adun is actually tasked to capture Karazhan and tap into that lay energy to stabilize a portal to um, Azeroth. If this happens, it's game over. He's um, trying to find the Titan. Right. Now we're going to be stuck fighting them on the Broken Owls. Now we've just given them an absolute open portal to come right into. Uh, wow. And yeah, it, it just, it would be, again, there would be no stopping, you know, the Burning Legion. Now, Visadun and the other observers are not really members of the Burning Legion. They're their own sentient race that exists from the Twisting Nether. However, some have chosen to align themselves with Sargeras in exchange for consuming lay energies. They have an, an insatiable appetite for arcane energy. But with that, that is really the eight bosses that we know of right now. Although... Yeah, it's a long dungeon. Well, yeah, no kidding, right? Well, from what I've it's heard... A, it's a mini raid. They're talking... At, if you're highly geared, and we're talking 875 plus... You can be in there for no no sooner than an hour. It's going to take you to get through. Um, Zero I, trash. I, Hello. Oh, there's all and there's a ton. And I had watched a video done by Fat Boss, and they said they went in there and searched everything, and it took them three hours to complete the the dungeon. Dude, we're getting back to vanilla dungeons. I like it, but I we don't. haven't seen this since Black Rock. You know, yeah, when we're talking exactly. Black Rock depths, and we're talking oh Wayland Caverns when it was actually Ubers, man. vanilla Ubers. Ubers. Uh, Lobers, hell, I mean, yeah. some of these things were just an annoying. Back when it was but one dungeon. Yeah. With these, <laughs> with these eight bosses that we know bosses. right now, there's actually a ninth boss that has not been implemented. Um, it it is, is rumored that. Like... No, no, it is actually rumored to be Nightbane. I knew it was going to be one of the two dragons. So right, because there's a lot of them we don't go to. We don't see Nelsaran. We don't see um, Might or Nether Spike. We don't see a lot of these, but we do get the Mount Nightbane. We get a Nightbane Mount out of Karazhan. So if it is giving you a reason to go into this damn place on Mythic to go for the Mount, but we don't know where it drops from. Um, right now, it's been the Mount says that it drops from there on a PTR. However, that might change. Nightbane used to be Arcanagos, which was a blue dragon flight, and it was corrupted. Um, you know, this would be awesome. I liked the Nightbane fight. I liked, I've always wanted that as a mount, but, you know, they never really. I was upset me. when they got rid of the attunement for that damn fight. Oh, like, yeah. When I, when I came back to game and that little vial or whatever it was, was shaded out, I was pissed, and I actually sent a tell to a GM. <laughs> Was what that, happened to my attunement? <laughs> wasn't that Dorn? That was Dorn Cataclysm when they changed that. Yeah, because when they, I yeah, had they changed everything. I had just finished the quest like right before Cataclysm launched. Wow. And then when I went back in there again, I didn't even need a damn thing. Nope. And it was a long quest line. Uh, yeah, it really was too. Yeah. And now wait, they got so you can actually go fight him yeah. again? Well, this is not been it's not been data mined who the ninth boss is. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was like, saying like, like right now. Ask care. Like oh, yeah, you can care. go get Nightbane right now in Old Kara. Yep. Because when you enter it, you're going to be entering through the front. Yep. If you go into the, the portal, it'll be around to the side entrance to the service. I entrance. never ran that way because I never got the attunement. So I was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all this stuff with, you know, Nightbane, the mounts, it, it's pure, you know, it hasn't been 100% confirmed that Nightbane will be it. And as of this recording, it could be changed. But Blizzard has neither confirmed nor denied that this boss will be there. So, things to watch out for it. My final thoughts on it that I really cannot wait to go back to, you know, to, to quote-unquote return to Karazhan and investigate all the little nook and crannies this tower has to offer. Um, see what's been lurking in the shadows for all these years that we really haven't been there. 
Um, and, That's why and you clear it, and then you go back inside. That way you can enjoy and see everything you missed. The amount of trash, though, even when you go backstage, it will take you 15 minutes to clear all the trash out of that area just to go back in and see what's there. I don't, I don't want to hear that Sounds shit. Sounds terrible. Are we promoting this place? Or? Well, hopefully, <laughs> oh, absolutely. hopefully I'll, get the, it's, I'll get the beginning of two-minute quest, um, which actually comes from your mission board, which is why you need 850 followers. Uh, I've been checking every couple of hours to see if them. it's popped. So it still hasn't popped yet in PTR. We'll, as soon as that's up, I will be doing a full video on everything that you need to be able to attune for it, the attunement itself, plus the dungeon. So, so. It, it's just based off your followers being 850, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else. No. Have you like... sent a mission out recently to refresh the board mm -hmm. kind of thing? Yeah. Oh. Doing random yeah. ones. I think I would ask. Because I have followers that are 850, and I've, the last one's 800, so I haven't seen anything. Well, you won't, because I mean, it's not for, you won't see it till PTR. I'm doing it in PTR. Oh. Yeah, you yeah, won't. So I mean, you can't. PTR. You I mean, can't begin. Have... You can't begin attunement until seven point one. You can't like pre-attune for it. We still have like, a few months going to PTR that. since I have yeah. four followers at fifty. Yeah, you can. You, Maybe. Can, you can copy your character over to PTR if you want to do some testing. But uh, I am working on trying to get that information for those who don't PTR. Hopefully, cross fingers. I tried to get it done last week so that we had something for it. Like in while he was doing his lore, but that's not the case. Uh -uh. It was good. So I mean, it, it, it just brought back a lot of memories for me, it did. and you know, so. So Let's for, go look, go look at some of these videos. They're beautiful. For I keeping bet. up with time, since we are way over, um, <laughs> let's keep things moving right along. And Jim has a very lovely professional segment laid Shit. out and prepared for your guys' listening. Wonder where he prepared this at. Mm. We'll see. Pleasure. Like the total yeah. Time. Well, thanks for the intro, and uh, glad you could make it here. Uh, <laughs> last week, we did discover that events are back. Very exciting. And then today, we also found out that... Uh, when he says you know, we discovered, he means he discovered, because yeah, we already absolutely. knew. <laughs> I, I discovered. I did not know. And so I did learn, and then I learned something else as well on today's show. This is why I watched that. Um, you don't need all the rep for World Quest, right? So it makes power leveling your pets that much better. That was like the main concern... Because when you're doing these pet battle dailies, you're getting it's a daily for an, an alt that needs experience if you choose to do that. And before you know it, you'll have a few tunes at 110 because it's very easy to power level pets. So, you know, get those uh, the pet treats to give you the extra experience, power level those pets, and then power level your tunes because uh, it's easy and it's fun. And then you'll have more, uh, you know, tunes at 110. Now, I want to talk about some of the new achievements in Le Legion, uh, uh, specifically the achievements where you need to defeat the 12 Master Tamers with specific pet teams, right? So, you know, I've started off knocking what I consider the easiest ones off. Mechanical pets, aquatic, dragons, if you got the right dragons, and flying pets, if you got the right flying pets, right? Flying pets could be a challenge for you if you don't have the right pets. Terra Claw Hatchling is one that you'll repeatedly use. I've got, you know, most of the tamers done with flying, mechanical, aquatic, and dragons. Now, I've specifically not done any of them with undead, elemental, and magic companion pets. And the reason why I'm holding off on completing those, I mean, I record them every time I complete them, but there's not as many common undead elemental and magic pets in my opinion. When I'm doing the mechanical pets, I can re recommend a pet like the Warbot, right? It will help you in multiple teams, the Terraclaw Hatchling for flying. But with a lot of the new companion pets in the game, there's some cool magic ones and undead ones. So again, I, I want to make good guides and I want you to be able to use a pet more than once. So that's that's why I'm waiting off. So, And then the other thing is, you know, you you can do it with three pets with one team. I personally like the challenge of doing it with two. You don't need to do that. So I like doing that for my clips for the channel using two pets just for fun factor and challenge on skill, right? Because it is easier. Most you can easily do with three pets, most, depending on what breed of or family of pets you're using, right? So I'll, I'll eventually make a, a list of the more common pets used, like the couple that I mentioned already. That way it will help you. You know, if you don't have as many pets to max level, some of you are still leveling pets maybe to knock out some of these achievements. And there's, I believe, 10 of these achievements that will help you unlock a pet as well, right? So there's a lot of the new pet battle achievements that we've talked to previously. Um, yeah, so again, I've just been testing a lot of those things as well. Uh, and then what was fun this week was, you know, we joked around about size doesn't matter. That was uh, Blotus was... Uh, the world quest that I had not seen yet in, in Legion, and I don't remember doing it in beta as well. So that was fun. 
And you really just need two pets specifically, in my opinion, if you if you come up across a huge pet boss, right? Not a pet team with three pets, but a pet boss. So you'll use the Zandalari ankle render because it just it, if it doesn't kill it all and with with its you know by itself, you'll be able to use a second pet in most scenarios to kill. And then Icky the bird. So those are two that I recommend. They help you in so many scenarios. But I used against Blotus, and then I got to finally do Venue. This is just maybe this could go my week and wow, but I was excited to <laughs> test. Do your yeah. segment now. Do it all at once. Yeah, do it all now. Well, I get into the PvP stuff and I forget pet battle stuff, right? Because I do every week, I do a lot of pet battle stuff. So the reason why I brought up Venue is there's not a lot of video guides out there. And when I wanted to record and defeat it for the first time to get credit towards my pocket pet portal in the, the quest, I was just so tired from work and I got home. I wanted to just beat it. So I had a lot of fun the other day on my day off and I was able to almost solo venue with a moth or a thundertail beaver which was cool because i never used those as well and then uh chi chi was a cool option to basically solo those pet battles so i just want to talk about that kind of more of my week in wow but uh, i'll continue to post videos of course for the pet battle achievements and keep you updated i still don't have my pocket pet portal kind of disappointed you're not how really much longer is that going to take a good single man it's just, I'm an excellent single man. It's just that you're at the mercy of whatever Blizzard makes the world quest that day, right? True. So, yeah. so you really just, that's why sense. I didn't get a chance to do Blotus, right? So that's I, I why I don't have my moose mount. Hmm. Eh? What are you talking to, boo? You'll get I it. Know. Secret, yeah. just keep trying. That's all I really give a shit keep, about right now. Keep on chugging. Um, yeah. 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 Life doesn't life. matter. So, considering the fact that Secret's been doing a lot of sleeping, it stands to reason that sure Secret did. does not have a segment, and that's okay because we're over time anyway. So it doesn't really matter that he doesn't yes. have a segment. Oh. His segment is raid etiquette. Don't sleep for seventeen hours. Is literally what's in his segment note. So, yes. which is or fine. We haven't started progression yet. So, no. Secret yeah, no, has I mean, prepared. Sorry, go ahead, my bad. No, like everyone's been been working really hard from last week. Um, I've seen so many people doing Mythic Plus dungeons. Um, you know, just in general. So, for for writers in general, super proud of all you guys that have been doing all the extra hard work. Uh, talking with other people from your classes to find out rotations, etc. Uh, big deal, because you know, from what I've seen today compared to last week, big big change in DPS uh, mechanics and you know. As a whole, um, super proud of all you guys. Sorry I missed it, but yeah, um, my life sucked yesterday, and all it consisted of was sleep. Um, no restroom breaks, no nothing. When you had a birthday recently, because you're old as fuck, so that also Yeah, uh, happy birthday to me, Saturday, um, 33 years old, finally. Happy Not that belated. I'm proud of that. Yeah, so either way, happy I look belated. at it, I'm going to be 33 for <laughs> an entire year. <laughs> uh, so, Usually uh, how it works. Yeah, so I guess that's what it could turn out to I got I got a year older and I just wanted to lose a day of sleep. You're 18 you know. with 13 years of experience. That's all right. That's it right. It could man. be like, worse. Like... That's okay. No, yeah, that's true. 15, 15. Sorry. I looked at it like you just prepared the raid group so well they didn't need the leader. Like right. you know what I mean. Right. No, no, and then no. somebody we, was yeah, like, I was just like, oh, Bell's right. leading. Well, no, yeah. Bell's not leading. Yeah. Bell is administration. I'm adding people to the That's group, and I'm going to randomly it. yell in curse chat when people aren't doing what they need to do. But I'm not a lead by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I, I got told I couldn't do that. Yeah. I was just doing fantastic, so, uh, you know. She's an overachiever. Just... She's going to do good no matter where you put her. That's just her, exactly. that's her role. She's so just... proud of her. She doesn't know how to be basic. She does not, it's just not in her blood, but no. that's all right. She has a, a bag full of legendaries, so. <laughs> Better than a bag of dicks. Uh, so moving. We can, we can mail that to her. <laughs> moving right along. Four Bell's Bites. Uh, I do have RBG tryouts going on next week, and I'm, I've been throwing myself back into the battlegrounds and getting a handle on PvP and what it's looking like for the Warlock. So I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm actually going to do what I swore I would never do, and I'm actually going to be doing a PvP destruction video because there's not a lot out there. Several of them are, like, months old. There isn't anything that's current that I feel like is super helpful for destruction, so uh, I actually put that on my to-do list. I don't ever like to do those kind of videos because I feel like when you do that, you leave yourself open for everybody to go and tell you how to do it better. And I don't want anybody to tell me to do it better. I want to tell you how I do it, and then you d decide whether or not you want to do it. So I am going to be doing... My setup, what I've, because I have been theory crafting with talents, uh, especially your honor talents. Like I've been doing my own things to see what works good for my play style. But yeah, that's and, what I was gonna say. Like, why are you gonna mimic somebody else and make a video of right. what somebody else did? I so. want to give a, twenty viewpoints of the same 
class and spec is always good because then you can pick and choose what you like. So I am doing exactly. what I know it's going to it's going to haunt me because the trolls on the comments are just going to be real. But I'm going to step myself outside of that uh, for the sake of just doing it now. Hots will be the first troll. He will. He's probably trolling me right now in his head and just has not vocalized <laughs> that. So let's talk oh, about... Oh, wow. Like, Desert like, video for, yeah, for mm. PvP. Wow. These are so rare because <laughs> that's what it's a thing. It, it is. Actually, the latest simulator, which we know I don't agree with simulators because they're, they're, it doesn't account for a lot of things, including mechanics. But the Destro for PvE I'll is second. Mechanics. They're number two, guys. Two. Two. Two affliction, huh? And it was not affliction. It was destruction. Anyway, so... Let's talk about the arena championships. Now, one thing that me and my husband had a large conversation on was comp because we've seen things that we have not seen in a really long time. And it was it was refreshing and scary at the same time. Sad as I am to even report this, I was literally devastated. Why the fuck do I see a protection paladin in a fucking championship? Whatever. I'm just going to let it go because it's never going to die. Literally, I and I looked at I looked at my husband. And I'm like, is that a fucking prot? Are you shitting me right now? What the fuck is a tank doing in arena championships? <laughs> Some of you right now are like, wow, Belle, you really do hate tanks in arenas. I really do hate tanks in arenas, but that's okay. They felt the need to do it. Okay. Have at it. You do your thing. Uh, it's just but a little out of place. It was out of place. It's something that I haven't seen myself in a while. It's whatever. They played well. It's fine. It just, I literally was like, it was that he, my husband thought something was wrong because I was like, what the fuck is that? And he was looking around as if one of, like, somebody had done something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pointing. We're at a fight. I'm pointing at my computer screen and I'm like, that's a fucking prot. Literally, there's a prot at the champions, like, at the championships. There's a prot. That a aside. Prot. You've seen a lot of demonology, which is really nice to not see affliction, uh, especially Snuts from Method. He's he's the you know he he's a, the best warlock in the world, in my opinion, uh, even when he is affliction. But he abandoned his held up his affliction hat for demonology, which is really nice to see. I'm not anti demonology, uh, so it's nice to see that being utilized. And I actually got to see some of the ways that they use their um, and I can see why because of their demons that they get to use. Uh, on why that's a thing, especially for targeting. So, stuff that they can yeah, it, and, and with the changes of Warlocks in general not having to build so much into their power to kind of be able to, to be bursty quite quickly with the, um, with the Soul Shard changes, uh, the Warlock play was really lovely. But I want to tell you guys about this thing. So when you're playing high level, these guys have secret comps, right? They have secret things that they don't really tell people about. They don't speak about it. They, they you never know. So let me tell you what happens with, um, they usually only practice it. It's method and temple storm. So all of a sudden now I've been calling snuts, my break in case of emergency guy for method, because whenever they feel like they need to go and get that win real quick so that they can just solidify what they're doing, they basically call snuts in because it's usually not snuts that starts when it comes to method. It's usually bean, which he's a rep pally right now, uh, specs in, which is, uh, he's, uh, an enhanced shaman. And then you have CD on his miss weaver. So they, they pull snuts in. I see him putting on his headset and I looked at my husband. I'm like, look, Look, they're breaking. It's happening. That they're they're pulling in the, the big guy. Well, you think he's coming in on his warlock, and that's not what happens. He comes in on his rogue. So they completely change up the comp, right? Now, if you could if you could watch the playback and see the look on the, on Temple Storm's face when they realize that they just pulled some shit. Now, keep in mind, Temple Storm. You have one of my favorites in the world who's not mage right now he's priest which is jamila he's shadow priest and then you have gareki who is on his shaman and then you have peekaboo on his rogue right so they did that obviously to counter mm -hmm. what happens is four seconds the arena starts everybody's dead on temple storm's team literally like they came out of the gate and the match was over like I didn't even know what was going on to understand that literally they just shot out and the match was over so as I'm trying to compose myself because I don't understand what the fuck just happened, I then see they shoot back to Temple Storm and all their faces are like, we don't know what just <laughs> happened. Like we Rogues just, are pretty crazy right we now. just got mm -hmm. wrecked. So I thought that that was pretty good. Now you guys obviously know I'm, I'm a Method fangirl. It just is what it is. I just, I've loved Method's PvP since day one. Uh, but it just really goes to show you that Temple Storm thought, okay, you know, we got this. They picked a map that wasn't super helpful for c but they thought, you know, let's let's just go in and kill. And they literally got fucking 
annihilated. So they did take uh, they did take the win. They did move on to fight Northern Gaming, which they ended up method obviously took the championship. Northern Gaming Black came in second, um, and then Tempo Storm came in third. So all three of them are going to BlizzCon, and the BlizzCon does start uh, the pre stuff starts the twenty eighth of October. But I wanted to talk about these comps now. Super heavy, heavy, a lot of melee going all over the place, which I think that that's. It kind of depends on on what's happening. Like last tournament, last year, we seen a lot of range, and I was really happy about that. I was really happy to see a lot of bursty range classes there. Like I think that that's important just because it represents what I play, but seemed to be a lot of melee. And it was really funny because there was a lot of ret. A lot of rets going on. And, rets are good. Well, Dark completely abandoned ret for Windwalker because he bandwagon, right? He talked shit about people bandwagoning. He jumped on the bandwagon. Um, what I thought was interesting is you didn't really see a lot of, you don't really see a lot of misweaving in normal play. Like, not outside of high end. I'm talking about normal battlegrounds. I don't really see a lot of misweavers out there. And it's a shame because Monk Healing is fucking OP. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. you got to be on Sidu's level because he healed himself at 15%, literally one more shot from that rogue, and he would have been dead. And he healed himself at the last second, and they won. And I was like, whoa. Um, but they talked about. Northern Gaming it just came out of nowhere, right? These guys, they came out for the qualifiers, and all of a sudden, there's four different versions of Northern Gaming, right? There's blue, there's red, there's black, there's green, there's yellow, there's purple. There's all these different avenues, and they're all very solid players. Temple Storm, they're good at everything they do. They do Overwatch, they do Heroes. Like, these guys, they're just, they're like Cloud9. They're everywhere. Pretty much all these high-end teams are anyway. Now, there was right. some guys that I hadn't seen before, such as Gronks. I thought that they played really, really well. You could tell that they were super out of their league, but they did give um, they gave some of the teams a little run for their money, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to see people that are not the fan favorites um, take it. It's kind of interesting, though, because a lot of people were calling Method the underdog, and I'm not really sure why. The only thing I see Method has an issue with, to be honest, is their CCs, and their their comp is not set up for that. Their comp is not set up for high CCs. So if you go back and you look at the last four different sets of qualifiers that they've had with them, you'll notice that every time they play, the opposing team has literally quadruple the amount of CC than they have. That's just something as, as an RBGer that I kind of look for because it's it's important. And I know that their comp isn't really set up for a high amount of CC, but there's like 43 CCs for one versus like three for the other, which I, I always thought was kind of interesting. And they still make it, uh, they make it work, which Bean is their new player for Method and uh, Officer Bean is what everybody calls him. But he's a... Uh, <laughs> He's pretty, he's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, the it was super exciting. I am so happy I get to see this shit live. Like I am just, you're gonna have to keep me Unless from the, the stage. Unless the scheduling goes off, goes wrong, and then they're gonna have the live band and the tournament at the same time. Sorry, yeah, that it's, was it's gonna be the just tournament. The you went to the band last year. I did because I really wanted to see Linkin Park and <laughs> nobody that I was excited about really in truth was playing. Like I wasn't, I stalked. You can rewatch it too, Katie, you? if you're really that yeah, dedicated. Yeah, you can. And I stalked Ben Rookie at the championships. So yeah. I can't rewatch a live concert, right? Oh, yeah. I heard yeah, it's going to be Justin pretty. Bieber this year. It's probably, I'm totally down. It's probably going to be just, it's going to be Nickelback. Uh, but if you guys did not <laughs> get a chance photograph. to watch the arena championships, you really missed a lot of good gameplay. So I encourage you to go to twitch.tv slash Warcraft and watch the past broadcast. Um, Why didn't you tell us last week's show that we would have got a title for signing I, up? I Some swear of us that I did tell you. I did tell oh. you. Uh, I actually told you for EU and then I told you again for US. Oh, uh, I did I get my title, that. Patron of War. I was super happy about that title. Uh, hopefully you guys went and got you. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us? Jeez. And that's a bad she thing. Did is tell I, us. She did. I don't know. There, I didn't have time to get it. it. <laughs> All you have to do is link your battle net to your Twitch and it's done. Two seconds. I have. And it's still not working for me. Did you watch they the They said it would be within two weeks. No, it happened I, right not away. Everyone, oh, not I, everybody. I, I, mine happened right they away. They said in the Twitch chat, it says you'll get it in a, up to two weeks. You watch the championships, though, right? You at least clicked on them and watched them? Like in keeping up with time. We want to... Yeah, so he probably didn't do any of that. So... Nope. With... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, Damn. Uh, with that... I got the last, like, five Super minutes, interesting to see the comp and just see different ones where they're, they're straying from what everybody has always told you is kind of the golden child. Different level of play. The CC is just... It's, 
it, that's just what it's built for. You're built to be CC. It's good uh, to see the mist weavers. And I wanted to comment, c actually took adaptation, which I didn't think people would take adaptation for arenas. If you guys remember when I talked about PvP and I even did my PvP guide, I had talked about pros just keeping your trinket for arenas and using your adaptation for battlegrounds. He totally was using adaptation, which... Was he totally a human? Well, um, they're all Horde. All these guys, you know, all the oh, top PvPers don't do alliance because they abandon the every man for himself. They, you know, they, uh, they play the and stuff. They probably, but, he probably went with Undead. Well, I thought that it was nice to see the adaptation because that's the one that that's less time in CC. So you can be CC'd a million times, and but it's going to be the duration is like 3% less. I want to say it's 3% question mark, not 100% sure. But I thought that that was nice because that completely counteracted what my line of thinking was. So it is sometimes nice to see these higher end guys. Now, obviously, this isn't the same for us low men on the totem pole, but to see these guys do something that I wouldn't have picked as in an arena i would not have chose adaptation because i want to control my trinket um but another interesting mechanic which i i want to say it's the ret the ret has a they'll have a bubble when they get below a certain amount of health and it was really nice to see these opposing teams try to force that bubble right so with that that interesting mechanic because they're trying to stop that bubble from happening because the ret wants to save it for when they really need it so the opposing team is going to try to force the bubble then here comes the healer like oh shit can you save my bubble the healer will have to over you know quickly heal to make sure he doesn't drop down it's some of those right. things i thought was interesting because it, it's newer in what we're used to for pvp it was really nice to just kind of see the way it's playing out and um i I'm not really sad about what's happening in the PvP life. So, interesting to note. Um, and then I'm going to be doing lots of PvP this week, so we'll have lots of fun stuff to talk about uh, for next week. But I wanted to make sure that I talked about what I saw in the championships and all of those things. So, let's get into the week in WoW. Lycan, what did you yes. do this week? What did you do? Uh, artifact power, artifact power, artifact power. Pretty much that's it. Level 5 now, I guess, on my research. Um... That's it. Spent a little bit of time on alt, but I'm finding out that I go on my alt and then I get 50 million whispers. Oh, come on. We're doing this mythic dungeon or hey, mm -hmm. we're doing this. And you're right back onto your main again. Yep. I, I don't. I want to level my alts. I want to get my hunter back up to 110 to start PVPing with him again. I want to level my priest for the lore stuff that it's been one of my original characters. I don't have the time to do it. Mm. And this is from somebody who spends a lot of time in game. It has the ability to spend a lot of time in game. And I still, no, I'm so hooked on my main and getting it out to max level. I finally get the one I'm going, okay, I'm going to go for this last artifact trait and I'm done. I could take a break, maybe switch over. To, and the, once I hit it and I'm like, all right, 120,000 art yeah, 120, artifact power. I'll be fine. I'll, I can, I can get through it. And then it's just, it's the grind is real. But it doesn't feel like it's a job. It's, it feels like it, the, the rewards are there, and I want to do more. To have a to-do list when you log in is just fun anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a to-do list that sits right here on this notepad, and this is the stuff that I can't forget to do every day because there's so much stuff to do. And I've got so much stuff going on with that. Like, I want to get 50 on my damn honor talents. I'm at level 28 right now, and I, I want to pro progress that even more, and I just... You have to make decisions on what, what part you want to play. That's and what I was going to say. I, why hop on the hunter when you're doing so decent or good on your your lichen? But right, uh, it's I, the I variety. Know. It changes it up. It, it adds is. more game play, and then you'll you'll always still PVP on your lichen, right? Yeah, and it, it is pretty cool. And and, and is it that to go in and have to make choices is refreshing than instead of going in and just okay i'm gonna do my garrison and what do oh, i want to do the else. least right now right right <laughs> yeah so that's nice. my weekend while grinding it up hots what did you do this weekend while well um killed heroic Xavius and summoned our friend Gemma here to get his dream well playing um other than that been grinding I have so many tunes that I have so much to do. Can't really. I'm working on my mage mainly now because it's now the main. But, eh. Yeah, I'll <laughs> probably stop eh. a million times. But, eh, you get the idea. No. You said um, you're two of something of Mythic, too, right? Yeah, two of something of Mythic. We got uh, Mythic Elrith down, and then we got Mythic Ursoc to 4%. Nice. Um, <laughs> 
you got so, to four, but that's so close. It's really sad it's, when. <laughs> yeah, the I problem is, the is we're hitting the enrage timer at four percent. Oh. Right. oh, okay. So it's like better get a we're legendary all before they boot you from the team. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's actually possible. I don't. The know. evil thing is, Bell would actually like giggle if he did get kicked because he's yeah. gonna have a legend. Like she'd like it a little bit. I think. I probably <laughs> would. I'd be <laughs> like. <laughs> 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 make uh, better yeah. life decisions <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow right. i don't know it, no i don't see that happening it's just eh. yeah that's just been yeah. my... there's Smash been the so much harder. to do yeah right? it's just or someone says uh push your buttons in a better order <laughs> um i there's just so much to do and i'm actually at a standpoint of it's like this is really good this is really good this is really good what do i play there's no real bandwagon to jump on like there's some it's nice to see and... you it's nice to see you playing well though i i enjoy seeing it on my battle tag instead of the sigh whenever i see yeah. you playing overwatch so it's nice i mean i i never stopped disenjoying overwatch but it's not fun to play by as fun to play by yourself as wow right. jim learns that I every bet. day that it's better with a partner I play mm-hmm. with myself all the time, and it's not a problem. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so awful. Zing. Jim, what did you do this weekend? Wow. <laughs> I got more boss loot off the weekly boss. Three weeks in a row, I mentioned. Ooh, I guess nice. I'm just lucky, right? Uh, and I'm it's so dumb. I'm like... 60 gear, yes. Yeah. So I'm like, well, Jim, maybe you should use one of your rolls, right? You're not raiding, right? Why? Don't, what a waste. I already got a piece yeah. of loot. Why would you use a roll after getting loot? Duh. But I did anyway. But anyways, grats to Jim. Uh, completed the <laughs> weekly PvP quest, was, which was really last week, right? I did it, I think, right after our show with uh, Lycan and Vash. Shout out to you, homies. Uh, Hots and I did Arena. I'm undefeated with Hots. We've never lost an Arena game. We did some twos and threes, so that puts our... My grandma on can do twos, so that doesn't Undefeated, though? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I really don't like twos because when you go... Healer DPS, if you go against healer DPS, it's just like this long ass battle and it's who cares? I want double DPS or I want to run threes, but being undefeated is real, you know, so that was fun. Uh, look to do a little more with Lycan this week. Secret Sauce is the only guy I haven't gamed with yet on the show. It's going to happen. It's going to be a thing. We would yeah. PvP with Hots, but Hots doesn't want to play, you know, PvP with me because he would have to carry me. Remember, like he did with us in Missing yeah, Pandaria. I'm not a rogue. Us. I can't. I'm a rogue. Carry us. Flashback to when he told people yeah. on the show that he carried us. I'm region. not a rogue anymore. I can't well, do he, it. He's very elitist, right? Which is obviously why he messaged me to go undefeated. So I appreciate, you know, giving me the head nod to run with you. Okay, and The uh, Eagles, man. The Eagles. Between the Eagles and the yeah. Dicks. I'm it just... was so funny. Ella, Ella, who does uh, our art or whatever. A, for, a? Or our, a? She does our art and she made a funny joke of like how both mine and Hot's heads don't fit through the doors when we walk into room. Oh, no. So it's kind of funny. That was good. It was a good disc. But just all around, you know, again, I got my Venu in and my Blotus where size doesn't matter and, and got a lot of recorded clips. So I'm excited for my two days off to pump out some more video content. And again, I'm just loving the Monk, like Bell mentioned in the PvP arena. It's so it's so good right now. And uh, I just need some more... I don't want to say people that I can run with all the time, but I'd rather, like, if Lycan was a, a Rhett Paladin, I really would rather run with, like, Rhett Paladin Rogue right now, but... Uh, no, you're good. It's just, you know, you don't have the CC okay, to do damage, right? Oh, hey, Jesus. I'm chasing that. Uh, yeah, not, it's, yeah, Fryza. Oh, dear It's God. not even a Fryza thing. It's just a comp thing, right? It's like... Hey. Okay, that's Fryza. what everybody that's like Fryza. But says. I wouldn't, I wouldn't not, I would not run with oh, Lycan yeah. until I hit a certain rank, and then maybe I would. <laughs> Secret, what did you do in your week in WoW? Uh, he didn't have a week, in, a week in WoW. Fuck face, he slept. He, yeah, I was at work. <laughs> he was getting I was at, the rest of I was at, experience. I was at work and I was asleep. He's like, thanks for reminding me. I didn't have any fun this week. I worked. <laughs> and slept. Yeah. Hey, it's I just, just, I just ran some mythic pluses. Uh, well, even something. with the other group that I that I raid with i skipped theirs because i was asleep like it was just a fuck fest of sleeping so uh it's like i said it's only gonna get worse um pretty soon so not your hair's on to. point that's all that matters yeah finally got that that was that was my weekend my week <laughs> we can, we can hear. Yeah, uh, so. well shout out to my new my new stylist <laughs> giorgio who does wonders so <laughs> 
for my week and wow yes. i was doing the mythic plus thing all the keystones literally i probably am only gonna get gold from my chest tomorrow but i did every world quest i got my good samaritan which was on my to-do list of things to finish because i want to start right into the new quest lines when uh the patches drop so i wanted to make sure that, that was done i didn't have to worry about it the tree when you get good samaritan you've unlocked all of that is so pretty in mm -hmm. i don't know how to say it so i just call it sean and on and on but that's not what it's called <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but your little hub that you have, um, hopefully you guys also unlocked your little bank because I did get my bank in there. You get it from the wither training. You loot it out of one of the chests that you get. Oh, okay. So I did get it out of there. But that's all. I spent a lot of time prepping for. I'm still doing my add-on videos, so I've been doing the prep work for that. And um, I just I've spent a lot of time doing Mythic Pluses. Like the keystones, mm -hmm. I'm completely 100% obsessed. Um, so... The bank is the chest below the tree. The big blue mm -hmm. tree. Mm -hmm. right. The one that's at the bottom. No, yeah. the bank is on the right side when you enter. You loot it oh. out of a chest to get it. It's on the right side. On top. Huh? Told you. Yep. The chest in Shalaran. Shanaran, wherever no, the No, the, the, the chest to get the bank in there is the one oh, below the bank. Oh, it is, it is in the yeah. bottom, yes. I was like, what yeah. are you talking about? Because I... I might you not know. be able to pronounce Did it, but I know where everything like, is. What are you talking about? I live in Surmar, so I know all the you things. Sure but yes, it's, it, it does come from a big chest, and it's not all the time. But yes, it is. You have to go in and down, um, and it'll be on the lower. It's one of the ones where you have to have five, ten, ten. The size of the chest it's doesn't matter. Chest. I don't know. <laughs> but it's in a chest. What's in it? You haven't gotten I it yet? I there. What? Oh, you're shaking your head. So, with that being said, we are very over time, and I do apologize, but that's what happens when you make good things. This is just the life. Now, um... Like tacos. Right. Cilantro. Like tacos. Now, I wanted to talk about, also, a lot of you have been bugging me and asking me for shirts. We have a shop. Go to pwncast.tv. I just found Click the so. link for the Pwncast swag. Go <laughs> buy your stuff. It's for you to have uh, nice, beautiful shirts. Yay. There's some other crap there. No, I don't want to call uh, it crap. Pajama but... bottoms. That's not crap. I don't think well... those are pajama bottoms. I'm pretty sure oh. those are leggings. So if you buy them, I will love you. Do it, Jim. Oh, I need to see my. Them some... That would be so much fun. And I didn't I... correct him. He kept saying PJ bottoms. He wanted to get them. And you know, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm just going <laughs> to let you know. Well, but get there's them. a coffee cup. There's all kinds of stuff. But the important thing, which was the t shirts and the hoodies, they are pwncast.tv. Um, that's the site for the. That's the site for us cast members. I did also throw up the cast bios. I did throw. Uh, I did do some, quite a bit of work, but that's how you can listen to the audio and watch the video also. But click the Pwncast swa swag link on Pwncast.tv and get yourself a shirt if you so choose to have one. So, with that being said, we are going to get the hell out of here because we are way over time, and uh, we want to thank you so much for allowing us to entertain you for our hour and a half, almost two hours every week. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And uh, we will see you at DitchCon. We out, skis bros. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we're going to go. We're going to go ahead and get in out of here. <laughs> Holy <Bye>. shit. <laughs> Bye, guys. Doodly. Three weeks. Doodly. 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 Three weeks. I booked my place. I'm not going to rap. So I can see you in leggings. You want me to rap? I really, and I feel kind of bad. Man. So for like three days, Jim kept saying oh, those pajamas, those pajamas. And I not once, <laughs> I did not once correct him to say leggings. Because I wanted him to buy them and then be like, what the hell? These are like... <laughs> <laughs> you imagine when we're in the ditch pond. Well, I did picture myself doing like a fake vlog, like with my coffee cup and my pajama bottoms, being like, here on a lovely day with Jimma Banks. But now the whole vlog would change if I'm in friggin' tights. It's gross. Yeah. It'd be funny.